Modest Chambers, Kings of Leon on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. And, uh, England are world champions again then, so. Oh, it's brilliant. It was amazing, wasn't yeah. it? See, I'm not a rugby man at all. I, I, I never watched rugby. I think the last time, I think was when we won about five years ago, whenever it was. And I got into it last week because I realised we were doing so well. We could, I watch England win anything. Yeah. You know I mean, I don't care what, in fact, I wasn't into war when I was little until I realised we were so bloody good we at it. We are really good at it. it. You know, it's brilliant. But, um, uh, oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it was great. Right, that's the rugby thing over. That's what next? With. That's it. That's all I've got. That's all I had today. It does steam me, sometimes I watch it and it does, it does remind me of when I play rugby, because one of them will boot it down the field, and then someone will catch it and boot it straight back again. Yeah. Which is essentially how I we play rugby. I was made to play rugby, we had to play rugby, yeah. and I don't think I'd get rid of the ball so quickly. Yeah. Um, I don't think I ever got tackled or fell over. Yeah. I think I touched the ball about twenty times in the two years it was compulsory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was terrified. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, same as cricket. I, I, I can't, I'm a terrible batsman. I'm all right at bowling, but it seemed like the pastime for people I went to school was, was to injure you. Yes. It was funny to yeah. see someone polax. It was funny to see someone get a cricket ball in the head. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. You know. I so never relaxed into rugby because the first day I was going to play it, my mum, I swear to God, my mother said, oh, you're playing rugby today, you got the kit and everything. Um, enjoy it. Be careful. There was a kid at my school who got, um, who broke his neck. And I, um, yeah, thanks so much for that. See you later. So, have you just went to school absolutely Man, one thing, wait, 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 broken neck, that's, is that all, do you get better in a couple of days? Oh, no, I can find a wheelchair. No, 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 no. Enjoy the game, though. Yeah, no, it was, it was absolutely petr- I was just petrified from that day. See, on. at least American football, you know, Got helmets. the helmets. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, uh, but anyway, well, no, no injuries, thank God. <laughs> thank goodness. Uh, yeah. so, uh. Well, I tried to, uh, try to play rugby, but it's awkward when you've got glasses. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about you. Don't, you don't, you didn't really play with glasses on. Yeah, of course, I couldn't see anything, could I? I couldn't see anything. How else was I gonna play? Oh my god, and they- So you're bound to be cautious, cause inevitably you're a bit more cautious when but you've got glasses next to your face. you're the tallest person on the pitch as well. Yeah. I mean, you were, uh, like, w- w- when you were about 14, you were probably six foot already, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, everyone yeah. else was like five two? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you were uh, towering above them, and with glasses on. Just with the glasses, and on. you've got pretty cool glasses now. That's very you've much. had a bit of a, a makeover. Makeup. It's like Trini and Suzanne said, yeah. first thing to go, the glasses. Sure, sort them out. Yeah, yeah. and well, presumably you used to have those national sort of bottles. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it true you've never been able to mosh? I tried to mosh. I. I, cause cause I've always watched people stage diving, moshing at concerts. I've always thought that looks like brilliant. You know when they they um they ride ab- above like everyone's away, heads, like they're surfing across on someone's the, yeah, hands. Yeah, amazing. Like, yeah. And I've always wanted to do that because I'm a big rock music fan. And uh, the only time I did mosh was at Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the mosh at Rage Against the Machine. I, I love the idea of a, a band called Rage Against the yeah. Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, aimed at a man with glasses who yeah. won't mosh. Well, it was at the Reading Festival, and I think the lead singer—I forget his name—he went um. Can I just remind everyone that racism and fascism, fasci- fascism are on the rise in Europe again. Let's not let it happen. What did you do? And we all cheered, obviously. I mean, if there's one thing that guarantees a cheer yeah. at Reading Festival, it's down with fascism. And what did they do about it after the concert? And did pretty they, much did, went back and did, went, went home and had a cup of tea. Probably, I don't yeah, know what sure, they got sure. They didn't go to Europe then and try don't and stop. They, no? I don't think they got involved politically in Europe. I think they just continued to rage against the machine. Yeah, Maybe. but largely in in America, I think. Sure. But sure. Um, I tried to mosh and I got got moshing and um, glasses flew off. <laughs> And I went, I went, I remember, because we were playing away, you know, hey, you know, do what you tell me, uh. yeah. and I, I, went, I was just going, careful, I've just, my, I've dropped my glasses, can we just, <laughs> can we be careful? Loads of kids so in, in hooded tops, yeah, exactly. just going mental. Yeah, and they're all jumping up, so I was like, just, can we just calm down for a second? Let's not be silly. Yeah. Yeah. It oh. was absurd, and I had to kind of, you know, scrabble around on the floor, and I, thankfully they were okay, and they didn't get broken. So what couldn't you do then? What do you mean, what can I do? Well, at school, could, can you not, can you not see th- without glasses? No. I mean, what, you're, it's like that you couldn't do anything. It's a blur. Really? Yeah, it's a blur, definitely. God. Yeah, it's like being kind of punch drunk or whatever. So yeah, you can't play sports when you, you know, when you've got glasses. But why, why not contact lenses? Because they're, t- they're not strong enough. No, I just, I don't, it was, t- they seemed a bit fiddly. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, brilliant! <laughs> bit of Lou Reed. <laughs> so what you want? Yeah, satellite of love. Classic, a retro cut. Lou Reed, with a little help from David Bowie there in the background. 
Satellite of Love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, Steve, you know how Carl won't do anything outside his jurisdiction. He, uh, he moans about stuff. He's constantly. got one job. We've got, we're doing about five things in the always week. Um, we, we just turn up and he's always available. He moans about it. He goes, oh, lucky you caught me, right? He's not, he's chatting. He just wins. He's one of those people that, uh, uh whinges enough and people think he's overworked. So yeah. he got Mondays off, right? He's just one, a whinger. Yeah. I haven't he got won't, Mondays off though, have I? Yeah, well, anyway. Um, two hours on a Saturday. Uh, mm. this is what the phone message he left me Wednesday on my mobile. But I just, uh, he's chatting about certain things that are going on at the moment. Uh, what he does need to know. Um, old Duncan, who mentions is my agent and, you know, you'll, you'll understand a few other things. But this is the sort of message I get from Carl, right? Window. Old messages. Hi. Ten past twelve. Wednesday. Um, just getting loads of f***ing people calling me all the time about sh**. Yesterday, DVDs signing for BBC London. I don't work there, but I've been dragged into that. I've got a woman on, uh, leaving a message from Talk PR going on about do you, do you want to go and see Pop Idol again? Right? They're just saying, uh, you and some listeners can go. So I'm sure you'll love that. I've got Jim Benner wanting you to introduce the tin buckets at the Astoria. So can, can you just like let Duncan know that I'm, I'm doing his job whilst he's sat on his arse with his thumb firmly up his arse? Can you let him know that I'm running around like a c here sorting shit out for you? Alright, see you later. Message <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? I know, but that's the kind of phone message he's leaving. But that, but, do you remember but, who he was before but, you? But he's even annoyed that he gets a phone call. I remember he got a phone call for you to do a voiceover and didn't yeah. pass it on. You missed a voiceover. That yeah, was thousands yeah. of pounds. No, I did. I did it, pass it on though. I told you. You I did. Said you I said someone had phoned. Yeah. yeah. That's not good enough. But who's that? Well, she she didn't say, and I didn't ask. But of course she said. She didn't say. Rubbish. So you didn't take the number down. Just when she went, oh, can you tell Steve to call me? And you went, yeah. Yeah. Well, I just thought you'd know her already. I should've oh. known, it was a woman, so, I should've known. He's having a go, you see? Unbelievable. I don't know how it's gone back on me, you're no. the one who was picking on it. Yeah, exactly, I'm saying, I'm defending, why is he having a go but at you because- he never picks on Ricky, because he knows you are his bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you know what I mean? The only reason he's got Mondays off is because you're still doing this show. Yeah. yeah. That's why he's scared of you, that's why he's like, he has a go at you on the phone, but he always picks on me because he knows, you know, I'm a pushover, I'm a nice guy. He's scared of you. I can't believe it. I don't know how it works. Is that true? Steve, I'm always sorting you out. I look after you. I'm sorting you out with tickets. I'm not sorting you out. I've got you today. Why are you picking on me? What do you mean you're sorting out tickets and lager? What's this? Right, whenever you want tickets. Yeah. yeah sorry, like I don't want to use this as like moaning time and that because yeah. I don't like to moan. I'm busy and that, right? <laughs> I've, sorted, I've sorted you out tickets for gigs. Yeah. Right? Well, somebody doesn't even turn up to. Yeah. yeah we won't even go on about that. Yeah. Right? Lager. You got sorting out the cure. He complained it was boring. Yeah. yeah. There was that big drum of lager that right. you had, and you said, oh, put that in your room for me, yeah. because I don't want to carry it home. Right? Lazy. So I said, all right, then I'll put it in my room. It goes missing, it gets nicked. Mm. Then you have a go at me because it got nicked. Yeah. I get you another one, you make me carry it around town for you for half an hour, then you say, oh, I can't be bothered taking it home, can you take it back to work for me? Yeah. Yeah. But, interestingly, this is like a year ago, so it's, it's, obviously, it's still, still pressing on you. Oh, hang it? on, and I forgot the one when we had an argument over 50p. <laughs> Yeah, and went you out for a coffee. Give me 50p back that you owed me. Oh, that was the that same day you were giving him about 40 quid worth of lager. But, see, this is my problem, this is my point at the time. It's not the 50, the 50p in terms of money is not what's important. The fact that you think you don't have to give me money back because it's only 50p, that was the point at the stake. Mm -hmm. I, it's me who makes a decision, oh, don't worry about the 50p, not you, it's only 50p, I'm not gonna give it to you. You know what I mean? There's gotta be rules, otherwise it's chaos, Carl. Come on, mate. You alright? I don't wanna fall out about no, it. No, it's not <laughs> right. Should we kiss and make up? Do you want that? Do you oh, want that? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we yeah. play a little record and come back to this? Because I can't believe it started with you slagging him off, Rick, and I've ended up as the monster. I know. Bit of Ariam. Yeah. Ariam and animal. Animal. I think that animals would be. <laughs> R.E.M. and their animals. What are you talking about? Well, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking. I wonder if there's another video for animals and the animal. What? On a DVD, an animals DVD. Huh? <laughs> what are you no, talking I'm just saying. About? I'm just, it's, it's R.E.M. there. It's just a good link. R.E.M. animals. 
on a DVD would be, I've got an, I've got an, I've got an animal's DVD out. My DVD, an yeah, DVD my DVD, out. my live stand up's out, buy it. HMV and Virgin. Well, no, I'm just saying, I don't think you should plug your stand up. No, 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 I'm not plugging it. It came up in com the animals from REM came up. I don't up. think you should plug your DVD. Well, buy it now. It's a really good stand up DVD. I, if you're going to buy anything, if you, I mean, it, I, I ought to what? balance this out really. If you're going to no. buy a DVD, you should probably buy the Office no. series too because well, I get no, money for that. That's been on telly. Animals, see, in, uh, mm, Animals hasn't been on telly. The Office has been on telly. Uh, it's moved all with it. Um, uh, but I don't get any money for the, no, the no, Animals that's DVD. that's what I mean. I get I'm everything involved. from Animals, whereas I've got to share the Office, where it was with you and some of the other actors, whereas I get the whole, the lion's share, lion's an animal, the lion's share of Animals. It's all mine, you see. Mm. So, mm. By, the I mean, the truth of it is that it's not, I mean, it's your stand-up and it's yeah. not great. It's a bit no, weak. My a lot of the observations are quite poor. Right no, 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 no. no You're a great actor. I'm, I'm rubbish in the Office. One Trick Pony. Well, I, I just touch my tie it. and I look at the ca camera, bored with that. Yeah. Animals, whole new side. Yeah. But 15, frankly, you've been 15 doing- quid. You've been doing so much publicity on TV that, you know, if people have seen it all, they'll have probably seen all the best clips. No, uh, yeah. And, I mean, office. there's only a couple of decent gags. It's only really the dance and you can get that on a JPEG. So some other um, great stuff Don't in buy there. The Office. There's some other great stuff in there. No, no. Phoenix Nights is better than The Office. So buy Phoenix Nights, don't mm. buy The Office. Okay? Well, right, let's get on with it. That's yeah. that. You. Right, what else is that? You've probably heard most of the stand-up observations on this show, so. <laughs> right, what have you got for us? Available in Action V. Go on. Oh, well. Uh, I'm annoyed. Um, oh, office. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was walking, uh, away from the show last week. I was walking towards Berry Street. I like to look at the records and that, the record sure. shops. And I was on my mobile phone, and I was chatting away to someone, and, uh, what can only be described as a prostitute, Go on. Stood on the street corner. Was she a woman that gives you sex for money? Yes. That is a prostitute. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Go on. And as I was walking by, she said, you want to buy sex? <laughs> no. You sure right. it wasn't a market trader giving six plums away? No, it was summer. definitely. Sex for a quid? No, it was definitely Go a on. prostitute. Yeah. And what annoyed me about it, what I wanted to pick her up on something, was the fact that I was on my mobile phone. <laughs> It's like, can you imagine, rude. Who, who would like, like, what, am I gonna hang up? Sorry mum, can I call you back? I've you know, you know you say you want me to meet more women. And you know you sent me that 30 quid <laughs> exactly. for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry Mr Johnson, I'm really excited about the job, can I call you back? I'm just gonna negotiate with a whore. <laughs> and it was just, it was like, it was just sort of, you could tell that she was clearly probably desperate for crack or a latest yeah. fix of smack, so she was literally, she, the normal etiquette of prostitution, you know, they hang around, they show some thigh. <laughs> I've seen this in they films. Will, yeah. Yeah, they exactly. will ya. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take her out for a meal. I that know. Sort of that sort of gone out of the window and yeah, she was sure. just there, desperate, running around Did the Did she go out of the window? Like because a that's another thing they sometimes do, specialist <laughs> exactly. ones. But I was yeah. shocked because I've never been uh, propositioned before like that. Really? In London. I was it's weird, there. isn't it? Carl, thoughts? I, I think you'd be sort of approached a lot because they tend to sort of go for people who look like they haven't got much chance. Sure. And I'm not being mean. No, 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 no. I mean, time sorry, so. I, I'll let you go back to it. In what way aren't you being mean? By saying that no, Steve, Steve, Steve knows is a little bit odd looking. <laughs> I don't think. Well, <laughs> no, he does. Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, before, no, no, but it's not whether what he thinks of his looks. No. It's what he thinks of you talking about his looks on. No, but it's it's on. like how you were talking before about you know your eyes are bad. It's nature's little way of saying, look, nothing to see here. Right? <laughs> I don't get that! I don't know what you mean! But when you look in the mirror and that, they've gone, look, he hasn't got the looks, let's make his eyes bad. Right? Yeah. Nothing to see here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, see, you're balancing I... it out. Right? Yeah. And it's funny, right? Now we're on the topic. Sorry, sorry, right, wasn't... Johnny Depp. Hey, listen, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm gonna... My, my chest is gonna burst at this but moment. All, whenever we go into this conversation, I always think to myself, Carl, do you know what you look like? <laughs> I, I'm gonna <laughs> you know, seriously, can I be honest with you? You look like, you know if you've got like a balloon, a hot air balloon, right, just a little balloon like a party balloon, if you drew a little face on it, right, and inflated it about halfway, that's what you look like. <laughs> right, I no, won't. No, play a record, no, I don't want to get into this, listen, it's too now, intense. Now, now you've, you've got onto this, let's just nip it in the bud now. I'll tell you something that I wasn't gonna tell you because I think- I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear well, it. Right, it was on the tube. Right, well I was, someone told me they were on the tube, mm. right, and um, it, uh, the, the tube pulled into a station, <laughs> right, and one of the women saw the poster that's yeah. out at the moment with you and Rick on it, right? Yeah. So this, this woman apparently goes, uh, oh look, there's, uh, Ricky, Ricky's on the radio, right? 
And uh, the other woman goes, oh yeah, d d don't you listen to it. So she goes, oh, I didn't, I didn't know it was on the radio. And she goes, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. Look, I'm sorry. look at. Because <laughs> he didn't look, he found this bad one. <laughs> she said, oh, look at that, look at that person he's with. So she goes, yeah, 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 yeah. She said, that's Steve. She said, I'm kind of, I was I'm sort of aware that he looked odd because Carl mentions it on the radio. Yeah. So, so it wasn't as much of a blow to me, but I can see how it was a bit of a shock to you. Yeah. So, uh, that's 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 weird, isn't it? Yeah. And that isn't me sort of telling this one to say anything. That was all happened without anybody else sort of bringing it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, was it? Sorry, you seem to be relishing this. Was it because of the little balloon story that made you? I, I honestly, see, I want to told you, but if you're going to start, you know, having a pop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, I can't just sit here and take sure. it and that. No, no. I mean, mm -hmm. all mates. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I was mistaken for Johnny yeah. Vegas. Steve's got a story about that, if you want to have a go at me. Well, you'd know someone just thought you were fat with a beard, which is true. Well, don't have a go at me, because he said you don't- Well, you started it. No, I didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't. You were milking it. You were I egging was, him I on. I was laughing. You were egging him on. <laughs> I sort of was. Yeah. But let's not, you know. Oh, it's a good job you've got lots of good mates like Jonathan Ross, who you can go and hang out with. <laughs> don't need other friends, people who've helped you in your career. He's a yeah. good looking bloke, isn't he, Jonathan Ross? He's a good looking fella. Player <laughs> Out of Time by Blur. Luckily, we're not out of time. We've got <laughs> another hour and 25 to go. <laughs> so it's not over yet on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. We've had uh, quite a lot of emails, as ever, Rick. I should so. just say, because you know so we're very lazy. It's a much listened to show. We're very lazy people, and we rarely reply or read out the emails, but we I do never want... read the emails. Absolutely so I rely, if I haven't replied to them, all my mail, well, Steve opens my mail and reads my emails, so if I haven't replied, it's just because he hasn't passed it on to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I haven't passed it on to you because I know you'll never reply. So, sure. You know, I'm just cutting out that. But I uh, just want to say thanks for the emails. We do read some of them, and we do appreciate the fact people send in jokes. Oh, I appreciate it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, just... uh, so we've had to do anything towards it. Sure, we had an email from Jack. He just said he missed the last two weeks' shows. Has he missed anything? Not really. No. No, it's the same stuff. Same you missed, I think Carl, last week Carl was having a go at, uh, Chinese people not aging well. He had a go at the gays and he came up with a ludicrous story about a monkey that was impossible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't think Jack's missed much. No. <laughs> go on. No. Uh, we just had an email from the Pringles people. Oh, they, uh, it, right. Good, because it's finally started to happen. I hear these stories about people getting given cars and Armani suits and trips abroad, and we haven't had enough, but finally, people are starting to, you know, realise what we're doing, our impact on society, yeah. and we've got a whole box of Pringles sent to us. Not on those little tubes, the proper tubes, the foot-long tubes. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, well, what have they said? Well, the Pringles they guys want them said, back. No, 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 they said, uh, they like the show, and if you want more Pringles, Give them a call and I'll send you more Pringles. Pringles. Yeah. I bloody love Pringles. Yeah. Pringles are The thing about Pringles is, um, they're, they're Moorish, right? Yeah. But, uh, how would I, how would I put it? You know the, the sort of thing, uh, when you open, when I open them, yeah. and by that, I, I, when I pop, <laughs> right. yeah, um, I have to eat the, well, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put this. When I pop, I can't stop. What do you mean? I don't- Well, when I pop, when I pop them open, I can't yeah. stop eating them open. Right, when you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's because of the chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be the reason. But they're good chemicals. They're, they're good, good chemicals. chemicals. They're the best chemicals. Pringle chemicals. They're not bad chemicals. <laughs> Lovely. Like using chemical so water. yes, I want some more Pringles. Yes. What so else more, do they more do? It's interesting actually you were saying there that like other people, you know, like Kylie I imagine would get given sort of maybe sexy underwear. You got uh, Robbie Williams where he gets the Armani suits. You get sent the crisps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it's nice to be sent. Isn't I, it? um, go on. Talking of Pringles, I, uh, yeah. on the Finchley Road tube station, yeah. very on the way in. There's no Pringles there. Well, I'll tell you a job I don't like. What? I wouldn't want to be doing. The the woman, there's a little woman who sits in the little <laughs> snack stall on Finchley Road. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how to describe it really. She is surrounded by snacks. She can't move for snacks. It's, it's like, a little like American it, Beauty, but with with uh different not dissimilar to that. <laughs> yeah. It's a little hut on the station. <laughs> yeah. And it's like if you go to the seaside you can put your head through one of those cardboard cutouts and it looks like you're a big fat person or whatever and you yeah. can have your photo taken. It's like an equivalent of that, but it's just snacks everywhere. She's got bananas up to her chin. 
She's got chocolate coming down to her eyes, crisps either side of her. She can't move. She can't do 360 degrees. She's like packed in there. I don't think, I don't know how she gets in there. I in think the they put her in her first and they put, okay, pour in the bananas. Yeah. They go, and then they go, go pour in the nuts. She has and two hours of makeup before yeah, they open. Exactly, yeah. Dressing her in there. Because I'll ask her something from the fridge and she cannot turn her head to see. She has to go by feel alone, just to feel the fridge <laughs> and get stuff out and pass it. And often I'll say, that's not what I wanted, but she can't, you gotta let her off. It's oh, extraordinary. Dear. But there's no music playing, Does she have to nothing? sell her way out of it? <laughs> exactly. If, 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 if it's a slow day, she's stuck yeah. there until the next day. Yeah, it's like a world-breaking attempt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, dear. That's Finchley Road, so if you, you So, know, if, yeah, if you're on Finchley Road or just want to pop down there, have a look at the snack woman, because it is, uh, it's How does she easy. get refills, though? I don't know how it works. I don't know how she goes to the toilet or eats. I don't know what she does. Yeah. But, uh, mm. but, uh, God bless her. That's, that's, so that's one of the jobs you wouldn't know. That's jobs I would not like. I've yeah. always worried about working in one of those big photocopying places. Sure. Because it's just, that's constant taste of toner. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so dry and just, just, I, I just imagine going to work with a hangover. Yeah. Eight hours in that sort of thing. I environment. think it's those jobs where what's the best that can happen? <laughs> that day, do you know what I mean? The photocopying shot. What's the best? Well, they probably have interesting things, like they, you know, people going and photocopying porno, I, porno mags. <laughs> can I have thirty copies of my art? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I couldn't make it to the to staff party. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I wonder if I <laughs> yeah. could do that in here. Yeah. <laughs> Carl, what job would you want to do? Well, any job. You're a lazy. You're yeah. Joking, aren't you? But, I've done loads of stuff. This, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy now doing what I'm doing. Yeah, you but, look uh, happy. I think you I sound happy. Yeah, I mean, you, you, uh, calm down. You on drugs? I'm all right. Are you on E? I'm happy for England have won and that. I'm what? happy for them. Yeah, go on, I'm happy for them. I'm happy and that. Yeah, what well, do you mean happy for them? We are England. Happy yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't play. I did very little towards it. No. It was mainly Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, I barely ever contributed. <laughs> Switching on the TV was about as much as I did. <laughs> exactly. And shouting, come on! Yeah. <laughs> Talking about jobs and that, though, I was reading the other day about, um, like, you know, rubbish jobs that people have had and stuff. I haven't got time when I work, man. <laughs> just, I just get on with it. I'm not squiddly diddly. <laughs> Fingers in pies, different jobs. Go on. Uh, do you know Ivor the Terrible? Ivan. He, uh... It's, yeah, his Russian... Yeah, that was the Welsh fella. Who was, who was bloody awful, <laughs> but not as bad as his Russian cousin. Ivan, yeah. go on. He, uh, he had a fella doing some work for him, right? <laughs> this fella built his house. Yeah. Uh... After it was done, right, yeah. uh, the terrible fellow was like, uh, <laughs> fella Ivan. He, he yeah. was going, oh, it's brilliant, you've, you've done a good job there. Yeah. I don't want you to build another one like that. Took his eyes out. Just what? stopped him making an house like that. Blimey. That's why bad, did, isn't it? Why didn't he take away his trowel? Then he could have <laughs> seen, yeah. but he couldn't have built a house without, without a trowel. You can't build a house without a trowel. Yeah. Oh, we, I, suppose he, I, I suppose he probably later thought that, once he'd been nicknamed Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, yeah. He but thought, why? Why? Because you I, gouged people's eyes out. Yeah, but I didn't want to build another house. I know, but... Take his trowel away. What would I have been then? Well, <laughs> Ivan the Crafty, at most. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, Ivan the Jealous, you know, Ivan yeah. the Spoiled Brat, but... Yeah. Ivan, you, Ivan gouged someone's eyes out. That is bloody terrible. I'm surprised you're not called Ivan the... Do you know what I yeah. mean? You're gonna get on an history like with Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. He's mainly remembered for impaling people. Yeah. He did a lot of other stuff. He did a load of great charity but work he did. It, the impaling is the thing that's really yeah. gone down in history. <laughs> when were you reading about Ivan the Terrible? No, it's just Or the Ivan the Terrible <laughs> is the, the the thing you remembered from this uh, informative article? No, it was, it was just little bits like that. Talking about him, there was a thing about, uh, someone who worked for that, that fellow who painted the ceiling. Sistine Chapel. Yeah, there okay. was a thing. The, the, a woman who worked for him, in his house, and um, I love how you assimilate information when it's just bordering on the academic, or just or just the interesting and true. It's wonderful. Ivor the Terrible gouged someone's eyes out, built him an house. The f that fella who painted that ceiling <laughs> had a woman work for him. Imagine if you wrote that down in an essay. <laughs> Imagine if you wrote that in a school essay. Well, you probably end up with not not getting a grade, or yeah, or, or thinking you turned yeah. up to more than you had. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the go woman on. who lived with yeah, the woman who lived in a shoe. Go on. Yeah, there's this woman who uh, who lived with him, and yeah. uh, she used to like you know go out and do all this shopping and that. Yeah. Uh, but because she couldn't read or write, he used to have to draw everything that he wanted. Why couldn't he just tell her? I don't know. No, but just... no, no, no. Wait, that's an excellent point. <laughs> Could she talk? Yeah, but if it's a big list and that, loads of different coloured paints. But why couldn't she draw? 
draw on a piece of paper. Why did he have to do it? Because he's a better drawer, isn't he? <laughs> That's the point. That's the, that is, we were just looking for the logic of the story. You found it. You've done it. Play a record. <laughs> I Don't Owe You Anything by The Smiths on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, over to you. This is the, uh, the time where we play, well, the world famous quiz, isn't it? Blockbusters, isn't it? Yeah, which is blockbusters, but with music. See you yes. later. Cryptic <laughs> clues, and that do you want to say? Not really, Steve? not really cryptic, but we've got a number of DVDs to give away, uh, including some uh, teachers' DVDs. We've got a bunch of CDs here, and also Ricky Gervais's uh, live stand-up DVD, Animal, Animals, which cool. is not good at all. I really would not encourage people to buy that. It is well. weak observations, poorly performed. <laughs> I would recommend <laughs> The Office Series 2 on DVD. Rubbish in that, available. I'm awful in that. You can actually see me forgetting some of my lines. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Right then, so cryptic clues, um, just an example, might be new, I reckon people will be staying in today because it's raining and that, so, mm. might not have heard it before. Mm. So, like, uh... Or they have and they're not listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. Uh, oh, good. You gave up on that, did you? Three, three. Well, give us an example of the sort of thing. Uh, that, that, uh, jeez. All right, maybe don't. Listen, uh, say that long. Yeah, 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 I'm a broadcaster. And, uh, yeah. yeah, words are my tool. <laughs> Go on. All right, forget that. Come on, Baldy. Right, three, three clues then. Here's the first one. It's a band or an artist. Yeah. Right. I'm going to the northeast. What are you going there for? Good point. Good question. Right. <laughs> well, so, um, yeah, if it would have been why you're going to the northwest, that's a different really? matter. Go you're on. Going to the northeast, what are you going there for? Right. Yeah. S is the initial, so it's a band or an artist who's who starts with an S, and that's the clue. Right. Second one. Uh, oh yeah, she's uh, she's related to the man in the lamp. Right. That's G. Right. She's related to the man in the lamp. Right. And the third one is. Uh, the Jamaican fella would love to live there, but it's a little bit pricey. <laughs> oh God, I feel an accent coming. That's on. one where you're gonna have to think about it with the accent. I the imagine. Uh, D S D S for that one, right? So the Jamaican fella would love to live live there, but you know, a bit dear and that, and a bit pricey. So. Uh, <laughs> so give us some again quickly. Right, the first one. I'm going to the northeast. What are you going there for? That's S. <laughs> She's related to the man in the lamp, you know. That's G, Changes and the Jamaican fellow would love to live there, but it's a little bit pricey. pricey. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's D-S, so uh, email in or text and that. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk, what's or the text? text? 83 XFM. Uh, yeah, what's that? Surprises. Brilliant. Right. Play some ads? Yeah. yeah. Okay. XFM. Steve, is there anything wrong with a bit of old fashioned rock and roll, yes or no? I do not believe so. Well then there's there's Jet, so roll over DJ on yeah. XFM one oh four point nine. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little bald mank mm -hmm. whinging twat over there? Carl Pilkington. Yeah, sure. Oh, right. Only. <laughs> 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 All right. No. Oh, go on. Rick, as you know, there's always junk lying around in this uh, studio and not all of it. Is Rockbusters Prime? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. And there's like, I just be so the playlist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, I was uh, just flipping through an old copy of the Guardian Guide from last week. Sure. You know, the little listings thing. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if people might have seen it. We did a there was a documentary on this week about the transfer of um, British sitcoms to America. Yeah. And uh, we did an interview for that because they're remaking the show over in the states. And I'm just flipping through. And I just I noticed there's a little write up about it here, and it says uh, da -da 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 -da, and it says. Quoting me, it says, We don't care if David Brent becomes a woman, burbles Steve Merchant, eyes bulging with imagined riches. <laughs> uh, no, my eyes bulge normally. That's not me being well, greedy, that's you know just that me. thing I did uh, on it when I sort of like rub my fingers together and do that stupid Brent. Uh, people say that seriously. I know. I know. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Oh, some people got it, but um, I think it was something the paper the next day said uh, uh, Gervais's mannerisms could have been transferred. As uh, dollar signs. Well, I was really yeah. sarcastic. <laughs> I was know. doing it like that. I was pretending that I just cared about the money. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. irony. Uh, you see, people say Americans don't get irony. Most people here don't get irony. Absolutely right. 
That, that's yeah. why they think this show's rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we fooled them. Yeah. We've had the last laugh. Yeah, exactly. We think it's really good. <laughs> exactly. Carl, come on. That that was. Uh, let's have some news. Let's have some. Let's do some proper radio. Have you? All, 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 the, all your news comes from Anna over, doesn't it? That's what will Doctor Fox do that. about now? Two o'clock. He'd do some amusing news. news. It's coming up for two, and here is the uh, news with Carl Pilkington. Well, like I said, it's just it's just headlines, and I don't bother reading on if no I like point. the headlines. And it's all from Anna over, not yeah. from a newspaper. Or it's or not made up or anything. These no, are okay then. Well, let's so. see. Let's see. Okay, imagine Trevor McDonald doing this. It's, These are uh, real news headlines. Okay then. Well, they're real. They're real to Carl. Okay, here we go. And here is the news with Carl Pilkington. Bong. Man hidden. Man hid in wardrobe to avoid work. <laughs> yeah, good. Right. Bong. Teenager gets stuck in washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Dutchman has two right feet. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Cow hit by train lands on farmer's wife. <laughs> <laughs> That is the real news to you, isn't it? <laughs> That's oh, brilliant. Oh, did oh. <laughs> oh, I was just great. think of the cow flying through the air yeah. and the wife going, "Oh no!" Yeah, yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Dutch man has two white feet. Yeah, he's having some operation or something, and uh, what they have, they put the wrong foot on him. He's got two right feet or something. Well, maybe it was only a right foot that was available. Good dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. What, what well, in real news, I was, um, I followed that thing with, uh, it was that fellow that got into the palace when Bush was there. Right, an undercover journalist. journalist yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it would have been a problem if he was a terrorist, mm. but it's sort of like, and, and as the palace said, you know, all our tests are to expose terrorists, not journalists. Yeah. I, I just think it was, it was no big deal, really. Yeah. And it was much more big a deal for well, a journalist than anyone else. Like, well, okay, well, all the journalists in the world can pop up as long as as long as no terrorists get in. Yeah, we're all right. Exactly. Yeah, a, a bloke just got through a terrorist. No, an ice cream seller. Yeah, that's all right. Then. Who's that? The waiting hand for it? I can't believe it. it's Baz Bamingboyne from the <laughs> Daily Mail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, I think that's Gary Bushell. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but um, it was just that he. All he did wrong, though, was just lied on his CV. Well, I think he did. But everyone lies on their CV. Of course. Of course. Oh, everyone actually, gives I don't, references. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever done a CV. I, I tried to lie, I did one once. When I was at Ulu and I was an events manager, I applied for a job at Radio 1 for events manager. Didn't even get an interview. Yeah. So I just stopped the CV lot. Sure. And I just, you know. The one knock back and that was exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. So, uh. You've lied on your CV, have you, Carl? Yeah, loads. Yeah. It's just, um. It's like someone from Little Britain. Yeah, no. Yeah, loads. Yeah, go on. Come on. There, there was one radio. when, Come uh, on. there was a job going at Granada. In fact, this isn't even lying, and I still didn't get the job. Go right? On. But, uh, Granada. Well, you don't get a job just because you don't lie. It's not, have you lied? No, you got the job. <laughs> yeah. No, but there was a, they ask you loads of stuff, don't they, that you think, oh, that's got nothing to do with the job. I don't know why you're bothering me asking me s certain stuff, right? Qualifications, things like that, yeah. Yeah. But, well, it was languages. Yeah. Right? What did it say? It just said, uh, you know, put your name, put your address, languages, right? And, um. What? Oh, yeah. And what I you, just. What, what, you don't speak any other languages, do you? Well, I just put English quite good. <laughs> you didn't! No, I did. Honestly, I asked Suzanne. I think you told me this before. Did you really put English quite good? Yeah, honest to God. Didn't get, didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they meant now, that you know what the, you know what your error was, don't you? Uh, are you fluent in French, German, Chinese? Yeah, but I didn't want them to think I've got loads of big words and that. Do you what? know what I mean? Well, I don't use loads of big words and stuff. No, they meant. No do point. you speak any other languages? It's any other languages, Carl, not the they ones. They assume your that you can speak it because you're filling out a form. Yeah. Oh, well, it's like languages none. They, <laughs> yeah. they assume you can speak something, and they probably think it was English. And to put quite good when you are English. Yeah. English is your first language, yeah, I'm quite good at it. I see your point, though. You're it's true, though, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. I I'm not sure quite good is accurate. <laughs> no, poor. English, <laughs> yeah, weak. poor. Weak. <laughs> Do you didn't get the interview, no? What did Suzanne say when you told her you put that? She just laughed. It was really? too late, it was too late to do anything. How's her hair? Do not talk about it? She's off today, so. Is it alright, is it? Oh, she's, she's listening, you mean? She's at home today. But it's probably alright now, isn't it? Because a bad hair day, it yeah, doesn't yeah, last. Yeah, yeah, but it'll be nice. 
Didn't it? Well, nice, not today. You're scared of her, aren't you? No. I mean, I don't want to... You've learned your, oh, you've learned your lesson that, you know, you can't talk about people like that, because it upsets them. Well, plus, I can't do it all now, because we're doing Pulp Fiction later, and it sort of involves her head. <laughs> so... Brilliant! Yeah. So that's... Excellent. There's me thinking that you're being considerate. Yeah. All worried about... You don't want to use up the material <laughs> until later. <laughs> Play record! Travis, beautiful occupation. What's the best job you've ever had still, Carl? Talk about occupations. It is still paper the- round. Is it still <laughs> the paper round? Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> no, it was good though. If you look at it, like, you know, what I liked about it, you're your own boss. No, you're not. You're not your own boss. <laughs> no, the, the guy who runs agents, agents is your boss. Alright. But then when, once you get out and you've got your papers and that, you, you sort of, you're on your so own. So you want you as long as you deliver the papers exactly to the places he said you are in the time he said? Yeah. It's freedom, isn't it? <laughs> Any jobs you wouldn't do? Uh, I just thought of one that you wouldn't do. Go on. With your sort of mild homophobia. Well, I'm not. Proctologist. What's that? Basically sticking your finger at other people's arses. Right, well, no, I wouldn't do that, no. Why have you got to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, why have you got to do well, that? Why does anyone need that doing? Because they got to look if they've got an arse ache or something. Which trainee doctor makes that their speciality? <laughs> do you know what I mean? That must be, um, right, we've got a place for horses, and it's it's you, Meadows. You you yeah. came last. Oh, seriously, what? I'm not the arse doctor, am I? Yeah, you came last. Oh, a bun, a bun GP. I can't uh, believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. you got to, oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. That must be it, mustn't it? Well, or, no one would choose it. No one would purely if they can have the brain surgery. Well, if what if you're brilliant, but you're shy? You couldn't look people in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could yeah. be. In, you could do anything you want. You know, I just, I just don't want to look at. I'm just want to do their asses. Yeah, really, <laughs> just want to do the asses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at Carl's face. You didn't, you didn't know there was such a thing as an ass doctor, did you? No, not really. Specialised. He does nothing all day but that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he probably has a sandwich about <laughs> one o'clock. Yeah, washes his hands. What do you mean he does nothing all day but that? You don't say that about a brain surgeon, a thoracic surgeon, do you? No, but that all day. That that's not good, is it? <laughs> I love the fact that I can blow his mind yeah. <laughs> with just things that people take for granted. A dentist just looks in mouths all day. Yeah, but that that oh, that's, <laughs> that's a bum what? job, that bum job. <laughs> Just think of that. Oh. So what, what do you need to know then there? It's a lot, it's a lot to know. You gotta have nice nails. Yeah. No rough, no rough edges. Well you'd be cause, right, cause you've got that job and no biscuits to the old people cause you had nice hands, didn't you? So, yeah. And I know a lot about biscuits. I know me biscuits. <laughs> do you? Yeah, yeah, I know which ones they like and that. Do you? What do they like? What do old people like? Bourbons. Uh, rich Do they tea. really? Cause that's my least favourite. I, I would never eat a bourbon. I, I could be starving and I wouldn't eat a bourbon. If you want to let us know what your favourite biscuit is, <laughs> not email in. If you've got just yeah. these, that But I'll tell you what, so with all them eating biscuits, I bet they get arse problems, don't they? So you could double up, couldn't you? You could be handing out biscuits in the morning and checking, <laughs> checking out. So some... what, what, why would you go and have that done then? What sort of problems then? What do you mean? Loads of problems. Oh uh, what? Prostate. And they've got to go there, they, they have to, like, have a little, little, you know. Well, that, there was that, I told you that story, that, that bloke, um, um, uh, it's not an apocryphal tale because it's, it's about an orderly's report and, uh, this is the bloke that filled out the form of what happened. He went into hospital basically with a, a sauce bottle up his arse and, um, on the report, uh, he, for, he said, uh, obviously, you know, pleasuring himself using a, a sauce bottle. And on the, um, the report he had to fill out, he said that he'd been shopping <laughs> at Safeways and he'd come in with his shopping and he'd, he'd forgot his key so he'd put his bags down <laughs> on the step, right? And he started climbing up the drain pipe to get in, right? But as he was climbing up, <laughs> his trousers and pants fell down. <laughs> he slipped and fell and the sauce bottle went up his ass. And the orderly said this story would be somewhat believable if Safeway sold their sauce bottles with condoms already <laughs> attached. That's like a game of kaplunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so he put, I love that he put a condom on it. I wonder if that was so he didn't want to get an infection from it or he wanted to use it on his chips later. <laughs> so um, waste not, want not. 
Talking of arse. <laughs> yeah. Blockbusters. <laughs> um, we, uh, we should give those clues again because we're not getting many right responses here. Let's give them once more. Oh, do you know what I think? Thing. Because the mentalists out there get his clues and they're rubbish. So I think his clue must be so way I off. I know, I know. That it's something wrong. Do you know what a pun is, don't you? You can't change the word. You can't have, um, oh, he, he, he's, he's bald and he rides a bike. Who's that? Bicycle Stipe. <laughs> that doesn't count. It's <laughs> got to be Michael Stipe for it to be correct. It's got to be Michael Stipe, yeah? Alright, well, we've got, the most we've had, we've got two right, alright? So. Let's hear the clues again. All right. First one was, I'm going to the northeast. What are you going there for? S. It's a band or an artist that starts with S. Right? I'm going to the northeast. What are you going there for? Second one, she's related to the, uh, to the man in the lamp. <laughs> right? That's G. Band or an artist. The last one. The Jamaican fellow would love to live there. It's a bit pricey though. <laughs> right? D S. Right? D S. D S. Email in or texting. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Or on the text, 83xfm. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Dylan. Dylan's of course playing in London this week. Yeah. And uh good luck to him. classic. You must leave now. Bob Dylan, it's all over now, baby blue from nineteen sixty something. <laughs> Bit of trivia for you, Steve. Go on. That is the last record we ever played on the old XFM before we were fired. Mm, I bet that was a moving moment for about eight people. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I just thought of summer. You know that, that, that thing we did about, they said that we just cared about the money selling it to America. Yeah. If we cared about money, yeah. would we be here now? <laughs> uh, do you know so what I mean? I, know, I, I know. think this proves that we don't do things for the <laughs> money. <laughs> exactly. Jesus. Alright, um, Carl? Couple of emails. Monkey Matt's emailed us. Who? Monkey Matt. Oh, Matt, yeah, go on. Yeah. He says, uh, That's monster. <laughs> he's alright, he says, uh, Carl has missed a cracking headline from the sport. Hide and seek champion found dead in cupboard. <laughs> I hope it's real. I don't know if it is. <laughs> I doubt it. Just looking through some of the news stories that Carl did make it into Carl's news roundup. Yeah. Um, Bomb. just this one you might, might be interested in. Headline, woman says partner ran off to become vampire. Yeah. And it says a young mother says her partner has dumped her to become a vampire. Rebecca Roberts from Somerset, mm, says Matthew Barrett yeah. fell for a blood worshipping woman in a US cult. The 23-year-old mother says she, he began shaving all his body hair, dressed in black, and used Rebecca's lipstick to redden his eyes. Rebecca caught him performing weird blood rituals in front of his computer at night, cutting himself to prove commitment. She said, I thought it was just a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a right to one. I was pleased he found an interest. Brilliant. This is apparently from The Sun. Uh, apparently he's left. He's gone to America. He's living in this o Ohio-based cult. But it's the last bit where she's been asked whether or not if he came back, would she take him back? Sure. And this is where I wonder if the journalist, you know how journalists are supposed to just report the news, be objective. Yeah. I wonder if maybe the journalist here has maybe had some interference. Made the quote better for Possibly, them than go on. Because it says, um, I never thought this would take over his life. Now, if he came back, I'd say fangs, <laughs> but no fangs. <laughs> I can't believe. Imagine you're the woman, Rick. Okay. And I've come round. You're the journalist. journalist. I'm the journalist, and I've okay. come round, and I've said, "I can't read about this." All it's I like, have to do is not say that yeah, thing. You've okay. come. You've come. I don't see. You're obviously quite upset. Yeah. Yeah. Gone gutted. Off. Um, if he came back, would you take him back? Definitely not. Right. Really, what would you say to him if he came just back? Just get lost. Right. But I I'm really pissed off with you. Would you perhaps say something a bit more pithy? Pith not in this situation. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're he, upset. He cuts himself. He drinks blood. He's left me. Sure, no. Sure, sorry. Sure. I'm not interested, mate. Because I tell you what. Go on. I mean. I like what you said there, but I wonder yeah. if we could condense that a bit more. If he came back, would you say- Go away. Would you say something- would you ever say something like, thanks, but no thanks? No, cause that's how- it makes it flippant, cause I'm really angry. I know you're annoyed. And I'm upset, so I wouldn't sure. say- I certainly what, wouldn't say thanks. I'd say- I might say no thanks. But what if- you, what if you sort of said it like aggressively, like you were giving him the finger, thanks, but no thanks? Like you didn't really what mean it. What sort of sarcastically? Sarcastically, would you possibly I say might, I might say, thanks, but no thanks, and right. that'll be it, and that's- right. that, and, and I'd leave it there, I'd yeah. never- and I'd never change that. Sure. I'd never change those words. Can I ask you a question? Go on. Do you like Puns. N hate them. Right. I don't like it's Countdown, I don't like QI, I don't like any of those past Cambridge, Oxford type. If I, you ha I, if I you hate ha puns. If you had to say thanks but no thanks in the form of a pun, what would you maybe say? I wouldn't. I never would. Right. I'd say thanks but no thanks. I would, you know, I, I mean, I feel embarrassed that I'd even say that because I don't think I would even say thanks but no thanks. <laughs> okay. But if I did go that far, I'd leave it there. Sure.
Sure. So, have you ever noticed, as I have, go on, the similarity between the word thanks and fangs? Not really. It's, it's very similar. Not thanks, really. Fangs, F T H. There's a K. Fangs very much. G. It's A and N. Well, the A, the N, and the S, but that's about Would it. Would you agree it sounds marginally similar? Uh, yeah. Sort Is of. it possible you might one day say fangs, but no fangs? I wouldn't know. Right. I could put that though, could I? But don't say I said it. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. Fangs, but no fangs. Yeah. This is the thing, this is the thing. Just, if you ever read an article in the sun, the mirror, anything, do not believe it. Really seriously question and query it, because... If it ends with fangs, no if fangs. If it ends with a pun, yeah. almost <laughs> certainly they never said it. Yeah. <laughs> Feeder. You know what? Um, I'm annoyed at now, right? We've got another ad break coming up. How many ad breaks have we had in this show? I know. Carl, how many ad breaks have it's we had in this show? It's about three an hour. Three or four an hour. Three or four an hour. So, about three minutes. So, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes is wasted on shite. I mean, apart, <laughs> apart, apart from the stuff we talk well, about. Well, it's funny you should say that, because, um, someone said to me last week that they felt that there were more adverts now on the show than there used are to be. Are there more adverts Rick, in I show? think, though, no. I think, just checking some of the emails, I think that's be be because people are requesting them. <laughs> they find them more entertaining <laughs> than what we're giving them. But. It, it, can't we sort this no, out? No, don't go on about it. No, no, can't we though? Why can't we? Why can't we have less? Why have we got so many? Is it? What happens, doesn't it? Ah, oh, well, no. Oh, they, you can't listen to radio in every uh, after every record. It's bad enough trying to keep me listening with the rubbish we come out yeah, with. Well, we've got rockbusters here. Let's get them back. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right, go on so then. Right, has uh, anyone got all three? No. No. Right. Okay. So there's some. I'm going to be. I'm going to ban rockbusters. Because okay. Go on then. What are the clues again? Tell me the answers. Well, give us the ones that they did get. All right. Well, they did get. Um, she's related to the man in the lamp. What's that? That was G. That Gina. Was that was, that Genie. was Genesis, right? Genesis? Like Genesis. So, <laughs> G the sister of the genie, Genesis, Genesis, they got that no, one. No, 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 what, what, no. What's the band's name? Genesis. No, 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 Genesis. say the band name, Genesis. 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 Right, okay. Well, I don't get it, because Genie is nothing well, like that. Well, they did, so don't right, worry okay. about it. Stop worrying about the ads, stop worrying about that, right? The third one was, uh, the Jamaican fella would love to live there. Go on. But it's a little bit pricey. Go on. Right? That what was, was the initial? DS. Deer Streets. All what? Right? So it's the Deer Street to live on. Deer Streets? Oh yeah, I, don't, I haven't heard of them. Are they, but what are they banned? That's, that's Dire Straits. No, it's not Dire Straits! It's not Dire Straits! Oh, Deer Streets! The Jamaican fella. Go would on, love to go live on, there. make it sound like that. Deer Streets. Deer Streets. <laughs> Do it again. No, it's still not. Keep going. I haven't got it yet. Dear, Go on. Dear Streets. Dear Streets. They got that one as well, so... Right, well, let's hear the one they did. Can I do an impression of a Jamaican fella saying Dire Straits? Right. Dire uh, Streets. <laughs> the first it's not one, the same! The first one they struggled, struggled with was, um, I'm going to the North East. What are you going there for? Well, you know, when you say struggled with, no one got this. No one got it. People Go on then. Didn't even attempt it. Okay, do you want the North East? I'm going to the North East. What are you going there for? Seal. S seal? What? Hull. Hull's up in the northeast. Isn't Hull it? is, yeah, Sea yeah. Hull, yeah. Yeah, so. I don't know them either. Is that a seal, right? So that works. Who's, who's seal? Seal. That's, oh, seal? Yeah. What's that got to do with the north, though? Seal. <laughs> so I'd say it, isn't it? Okay, that's the end of Rockbusters. <laughs> Unmovable. That's the end of Rockbusters. I can't believe we even brought it back, Rick. Right? I'm, right. I'm serious, that's the end of Rockbusters. Can I be honest with you? Go on. I'd love to hear some adverts now instead of that. Well, so would I. That is, that, adverts are better than that. Yeah. I'm just saying Laura. Doesn't matter. Laura's the Fine. one with Laura. Well Laura. Right? She well done, Laura. Two, but we'll give her that. Yeah, just play the so, ads. Right. I'm actually looking forward to the ads. Really looking forward to it. I hope there's a phone. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. We're all in love on XFM 104.9. Um, sorry about, um, Rockbusters. Uh, that's the end of it, definitely, because it's it, it was it was dreadful. Do you know what I mean? It's not. Do you know what I mean, Steve? Yeah. It's quite funny, but that was that was awful. I, I mean, we've apologised for that quiz so many times. I know we've given it. Uh, I think it's two comebacks. Like it, though, don't they? No, they people don't like, like it. it. They they don't like it because it's like it, that's two that people. No, no, that, that's the end of that. Um, less adverts next week. Sort that out because yeah. it's just it's awful. Mm. Twenty minutes of adverts. Do you know what I mean? It's not what people listen for. So. Um, right, redeem yourself. Have you got the film thing you're in? Right, yeah, I'm in a film. 
Uh, it's Pulp Fiction this week. Right. Right. Uh, changed it a little bit, tweaked the storyline a little bit. <laughs> okay. It's just to make uh, it better, yeah. It's just a. Do you know I've talked about Suzanne's hair on that? Yeah. About when she got it caught, I didn't like it and that. Yeah. So it's sort of about that. Uh, listen to it. There'll be a question at the end. You can win some good stuff. Yeah. Well. Right. So <laughs> and this is the scene where they're in the restaurant. Do you know when they're about to do yeah. the the robbery? Yeah. Plenty. Since it's not a restaurant, change that. It's a barber's. Right. All right. Okay. All right. God. There you go. Then. Oh, is there going to be a question after this? Yeah. Say that. Okay. All right. Uh, girlfriend came in here earlier. Had a haircut. I'm not happy with it. Look at the state <laughs> of that. Well, d don't laugh. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't want to cause any fuss, but just, just want you to sort it out. Afraid I can't do that. Well, you can do that because it looks a mess. Look, my friend, this is just where you and I are different. Well, well, you, you've got to do something because look at it. When she came through the front door at home, I thought Dave Hill out Slade had walked in. Funny, I was thinking the same thing. Look, we, I don't want to cause any problems or anything. She hasn't even seen it properly yet. She sort of had it cut and came straight home and didn't, didn't look at it. Suzanne, just look in that mirror. Look what they've done to your head. God damn it, what is it? <laughs> Suzanne! Get out of now! We're not going to do anything stupid, are we? I'm the manager here. There's no problem. What do you mean it's not a problem? Look at the state of her hair. Be calm, cooperate, and this will all be over in a minute. I want to go home. No, we're not going anywhere until they sort your hair out. I'm, I'm not walking home with you, with your hair like that. It's, in, it's embarrassing, so... So let's just get it... You die. No, forget having it die. Just get it cut. Colour's not a problem. Just sort it out. Just get rid of... Let's see what we can do. Right. Good. Look at it. Look at the state of it. I'm trying real hard. Suzanne, just keep your head still there so you can... Just hang in there, baby. You're doing great. I'm proud of you. <laughs> just sort that bit out there. Just cut that. My barber says I've got the, uh, the hair of a Chinaman. Have you, have you heard that before? <laughs> what? What's so, what's so funny about that? Is it, is it serious or what? Freaking me out. If my answers frighten you, you should cease asking scary questions. It's almost over. There you go. No, it's not. It's not brilliant, but I have to do, won't it? I reckon we'll have to buy her a uh, a hat on the way home. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> do you think Suzanne's listening? It's all right, isn't it? I like the <laughs> I like the fact that in that she's represented with a sort of dimwit southern accent. Yeah. Your girlfriend. So, I'm sure yeah. she'll have appreciated that. Oh, it's well. nice, yeah. It's a nice... I, I don't know what kind of copyright infringements <laughs> <laughs> that has made. Yeah. But, uh, All right, well, the question is, what did I say is odd about my hair? Odd about your hair? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, right. yeah. Fans of the show will know that already, I'm sure. Yeah, so, uh, email in, ricky.gervais at xcam.co.uk, or, uh, yeah, just email, actually. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bud! Right? Yeah. You can win some tat. The usual address. That is a beautiful record. Yeah, this is Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen, as recorded by Badly Gone Boy. Really enjoy it. Good job. Badly Gone Boy doing his version of Bruce Springsteen's Thunder Road. Good effort. FM 104.9. Tricky song to uh, do a good version of, but not good bad. Good effort. Not bad. Good um, badly. Tell you what, who's also made a good effort? Go on. Stephen Gunning with right. Tooting. He's correctly identified that Carl's hair is like that of a Chinaman's. Or oh, it was. Uh, yeah. Many other people have emailed in saying, how can we know what your hair's like because you are a bold mank twat. Yeah. So people have correctly... Is, uh, it, is our up. language okay on this show, in general? Mm. I've told you that, we, you know, to be careful on that. Yeah. Why don't you try putting some effort into it as you get Mondays off for this two hours? You come up with Rockbuster clue that no one can get because it was impossible. It wasn't even a clue. Uh, I've got, okay. got your headlines. I've done Pulp Fiction, right? I taught you about that fella, the builder fella, and, and his eyes and that. You don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know what you've taught me. It's sort of like you borrow information. It, 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 it's like one of those things that, you know, what are those things called, um, uh, read, 
write once, read many. It, it can just pass it on and it's, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, one of those CDs you can just play once. Well, it struck me That is you and information. It goes in, if you tell someone once, it's like you've lost it, it's like you've, it's like past the parcel <laughs> with knowledge. It's gone now, you don't even remember what you told me. <laughs> a chain letter. What? Just, you mean chain letter, don't we? Shut up. Um, it struck me when we were listening to his <laughs> phone call to you at the very beginning of the show, I don't know if you might have missed that, but basically it was a message that Carl left for Ricky, but about halfway through that message, there was the feeling I don't know if you noticed, but like the words started to fall apart. It was like he wasn't going to make it. Every time Carl opens his mouth, it's the equivalent of walking across one of those rickety bridges in Indiana Jones. <laughs> but m you might not make it to the other side. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at him. Anyway, we've had a few laughs and we've had a few insults. Yeah, but, um, so we're trying to sort of really, honestly, I'll try and sort out some else as opposed to block Rockbusters next week. Mm -hmm. Um, less adverts, I think. Ideally. Um, what else? Oh, better, uh, better chat, better music, better presenters. No, come on. We got rid of Monkey News. What? Oh, no, is there no Monkey News? No, it's gone on this week. Don't talk. T there must be some Monkey News. It's not like it's real news. You tell us stories about chimps from the 18th century. It's no, don't don't it give me nothing happened now. this week. You just didn't look at the internet. Did look. The and there's no the news. Nothing there was, happened. There was one little bit of Monkey News about um, <laughs> how you can now buy tea that's been picked by little chimps because it because it tastes good. Right. That's, that's what they're saying. Right. Why does it taste good? What I do they know. do to it? I don't know. It just annoyed me. Is it, is it those chips from the PG tips? <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> like, are they dressed up having funny conversations? Well, like, that's in the thing. Everyone made a fuss about, you know, that's cruel making them pick a piano up. Yeah. If I was a chimp, I know what job I'd prefer. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Doing removals rather than standing <laughs> in a field picking tea and that. Yeah. <laughs> That bit. He probably thought that was a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was there, a trailer for a Channel 4 program. <laughs> oh, we'll be back next I've week. I've got a little treat for them. Right, that winner of the DVD, watch the behind the scenes footage because you see Carl's little round head. So they're enjoying that. Who won that, by the way? We've given uh, that away, haven't we? Yeah, we forget who it yeah, was. Gone. Oh, Don't bother Laura. watching the rest of the stand up, though. It's a bit poor. <laughs> Leave you with fifty cents outfit. Fiddy, I call him Fiddy. I call him Fiddy Cent. Back next week. Fiddy. Don't steal our son, please, lads. Thrills on XFM one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Little Carly Pilkington, little baldy mank, whinging little twat. How all are right. you? Yeah, all, right. all right, yeah. What are you doing? Happy? Been a bit happier today? You look as full of, full of spunk, as they say in America. Yeah, I'm all right. It's a bit of a miserable day, though, isn't it? Yeah. A bit miserable. Yeah. Uh, walking in today, <laughs> right, uh, do you know I walked through, like, the, uh, sort of the gay district of, of London and that? Right. Well, you don't walk, you mince, don't you? I'm just just walking through on on the way to work, and I'm always interested in their their little shops and stuff that they have, right? Those <laughs> are the <laughs> their little shops. That's no no really shame. If you, want, if you want to go in and buy something, go in and buy something. I'm just having a look at you know looking in the windows and stuff. Um, little postcard just near the near the entrance. Yeah. That's meant to tease people in to make people go. That sounds good. I'll nip in. Right. <laughs> little postcard. Free butt plugs <laughs> with every sale. <laughs> Great. How did we get from 5p off milk yeah. to free butt plugs with every sale? Wow. What's society come to? Well, it's because we're liberated, Rick. Yeah. You know, it's an open society. What did you buy to get them? You didn't buy- oh, I didn't, I didn't know. But what- what's the purpose? <laughs> what, of the poster or of butt plugs? Butt plugs. Because I- I- I really honestly- You shove them up your ass, don't you? Woo! Slow down, bum. Shove them oh. up your bum. Yeah. But, but when? Is that just like when you're doing whatever, <laughs> doing stuff around the house? Or? <laughs> I think it's, is it to kind of, it's not to keep things out. Is it like you would use a plug in the sink to keep, you know, water in the sink? <laughs> oh, if you're not gay. <laughs> well, get that, oh, yeah, no, I know what you mean, yeah. I don't know. No I mean, entry. What is, it, what is it? I mean, I don't understand what that's I know, about, it's, I assume it either feels good or, or are they, <laughs> well, I've got to be careful here, or are they sort of like breaking it in? Right, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? 
Like, like it's like a shoehorn. Oh, <laughs> like, or, or yeah. you know, it's or like the... when you stick uh, paper in your shoes if they're a bit uh, tight. Yeah. Or, or um, or those people, those um, people who sort of like put little bits of wood in their lips, sure. and then as soon they got big plates in their lips. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. as the butt plug. It means <laughs> you can, you know, yeah. you're ready for anything. I don't know, do I? <laughs> the cow's face. Well, if you know what butt plugs are used for, <laughs> then I'll get in touch. <laughs> if you dodge your face, it's on the UK. What do you think? If there's any- I can't th believe we're already on this subject. I know. I know. I know. I was, I was gonna- I was gonna say then, if there's any people who use butt plugs, and- and I was thinking that Carl would have said, well they're- they're not up yet. Yeah. Because they go out late. No, but- But what? Is it- we're award winning people, we've- we've yes. written a Not TV on show, radio though. Not on radio, we're rubbish on radio. I know, we've got what? nothing to lose. But I always say to you, Steve, that I like educating people on that. Now, the way I say it, see it is, I didn't know what they were. Mm. Um, Let's well, phone to go. It. Tell them what now about butt plugs. All right, well, we'll, we'll get no, to no, them. Get them on. Get them on. Get, ask them. No, because they might say something dodgy. Oh! <laughs> yeah, whereas, <laughs> yeah, what have yeah, yeah. been doing? Just take a chance. Take a chance and tell them not to swear. Well, do you tell them? Okay. Right, Steve, do you oh, want I've got my headphones on. Hello, who's there? Oh, my name's Nicholas. Who, sorry? Nicholas. Nicholas, hello, mate. Uh, you're not going to swear, are you? No, I'm not going to swear. Keep it clean. Oh, yeah. Well. Keep them keen. Um, what, uh, what, what were you call calling about? I'm phoning about your plugs. About, pl m well, not my plugs, but your plugs <laughs> in general. What, uh, do you know much about them? No, Are you a I'm plug just... user yourself? No, I'm just thinking if maybe you've got some gay friends and you're spending the night at their place, you might want to use one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what, you mean experiment with them, or? No, so you can make sure they're not going to do anything while you're asleep. Do you, right. could, I, could I suggest, could I suggest, uh, you know, just lock the door? I mean, <laughs> that is easier to can me. I, can I make a bigger suggestion? <laughs> That's probably the most homophobic thing we've had said on the show today. <laughs> Thanks very much for your call. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. well that's why we shouldn't put people on the line. <laughs> just, you know, without checking first. <laughs> I think Carl's made a good point. That's the kind of a, of listener we've got. <laughs> God gave rock and roll to ya by Kiss on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. I'm bloody extra. glad he did, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, I am. Cheers. Carl Pilkington's with us as well. He's learnt some stuff while well, uh, the song's been on. He's had a couple of calls. One from a bloke, one from a woman who worked at a sex shop, and you learnt quite a lot. I can see your eyes widening. What have you learnt then about butt plugs? I haven't really learnt anything. I don't. I still don't understand. Yes, you have. No, but she's just, the woman was just saying, you know, it spices things up a bit. Yeah. Well, what do you need to do that for? The end result is always the same, I think. <laughs> so why complicate it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Are you with me, though? These people who say, you know, they do stuff all night, it's like, what's the point? <laughs> That's why I like short stories and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. So. Excellent. If I wish people could see what he looks like when he's talking yeah. about it. Oh, in fact, he's in heat next week, Steve. Right. Um, Isn't yeah, yeah, they put a picture of him. They could do the grab off the the DVD, mm -hmm. and he's behind the scenes, and uh, he's got his little picture in heat, and he <laughs> hates it, don't you? Well, I'm a bit annoyed because I didn't want it in. <laughs> Why are you worried? Just don't want people no, knowing what, you look what like. I look like and that. Why? Were you on the DVD? Yeah, but it's to public domain. Anyone can take it off there and put it on the paper now. But I, but that's extras on a DVD. And I'm just thinking, not that many people. If they watch it, they won't take it in, stuff like that. What are you worried about then? Just, I don't. There's, like, me brother and sister and stuff who I don't see anymore. If they know what I look like now, they might. What do you mean if they know what you look like now? They've just got to imagine little Carl Pilkington with no hair. No, I've, I've changed quite a lot because I work hard, don't I? So I've aged quite badly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I'm just thinking if they. He's got the hair of China. But didn't sorry, you? why why is it a problem for your brother and sister to see you? Because I don't see them anymore, do I? And they'll come out of the woodwork now. To what? what? They're after what? your million. No, no. So they're sitting at home. They're looking at heat, and there goes Carl. Oh, Carl's my brother. My bro my brother. Oh, maybe I'll go and see him. I don't. I don't want the hassle. But they could find out where you are. What's, in hassle? What's the hassle then? It's just hassle of having friends and family and that. <laughs> You mean this, don't you? 
Yeah, it's, you know that I'm not, not into be, you know, having but dates. if either that. your brother or your sister came to your door, would you not welcome, in it, welcome them in and give them a cup of tea? Do you know what? He bumped into his sister, right, after about seven years, in a car park somewhere, right? And she went, oh, I've got a picture of my, my new kid, do you want to see it? He went, not really, all kids look the same. And she went off in half. Unbelievable. Yeah, but that's the problem though, isn't it? She, she hadn't seen me for years and years. That's the way I am. I'm not like being rude or anything, I'm just says what comes in me head. Oh, don't give me that. Don't do that. I'm not rude. It's what comes in me head. That's a rubbish excuse. Not know rude. me, know my ways. Mm. Yeah. Right, I'm wrong then. Let's look at it. Let's look at the- what Hey, I there's an ounce of Barmer's cakes. Know <laughs> me, know my ways. Get out, you twiddle flunt. <laughs> what is that? What sort of philosophy is that? Know me, I'm rude and take it or leave it. I'm not it. being rude. You what? are being rude! What, saying that old babies look the same? It's your nephew! You didn't even bother to have a look, you could have been courteous yeah, and had a look at the picture. If it was a first, I'd say fair enough, but she's got loads of kids. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> what kind of woman is she? <laughs> Stardust, from Ziggy Stardust and the spiders from Mars. I went to see him Tuesday, I know you went to see him Wednesday, Steve. Mm. I mean, obviously I'm a mental fan, but I think objectively that was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Yeah, it was brilliant. He's got the best band in the world, he, it, it, he played all the hits, it was an amazing show, the sound was incredible, he, I mean, do you know what I mean? Well, his just voice as well, I think people don't realise how incredible his voice is. It was absolutely- Soulful is the word I'd use. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. Don't, don't give it, you don't care, do you, Carl? We don't care about this. You never really go to gigs, do you, Carl? You know, the live music experience is not something you enjoy. Uh, can be alright. I mean, I heard, is, go on. I heard that someone else who went to the Bowie thing said that he sort of messed with the songs a bit, which would annoy me. No, he didn't. Not really. Hardly said, at all. He said when they did, um, Life on Mars, instead of saying something about, uh, just, just the tune of it, he messed with it so it wasn't the same. That, that would annoy me. What would you well, do? Well, well, but, I mean, we're not talking, oh. we're not talking Bob Dylan or Sinatra. He, it's the, he ad-libbed a little bit, I suppose, and it's his song, but it was, t you know, totally faithful. It was, he was singing the songs. What do you yeah. mean? Well, it's just, don't, don't mess with stuff. It's like if you went to see Titanic and then the boat didn't have a crash, you'd go, what, the, what are they doing? It's like, oh, Franz is messing with it. Well, he didn't, mean, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, he didn't mess with it. Relatively speaking, he did not mess with the songs. They were brilliant renditions. That would be oh. a hell of a film, though, where Titanic <laughs> gets to New York. That's really fine. Oh, Carl. But, uh, oh, you're amazing. It's because I work here, though, and there's a lot of gigs going on all the time, and then you get to a point when, you know, you just go, oh, get a bit fed up with that. Well, I mean. when was the last time you went to a live experience? Uh. Well, I've, I've been to gigs, but the one that springs to mind probably is when I first sort of tried a gig out, and it wasn't a music one, it was, um, it was Bottom, you know, with- <laughs> <laughs> Bottom, what, Bottom the Live thing with- With Rick Mayer and Edwin Hamilton. Yeah, when Manchester. was that? Years ago, cos it was, it was in, in Manchester in about, I don't know, 87, 88 or something, and, uh, I was set up for a, for like a blind date. Right, this, uh, a mate of mine sort of set me up to see this. See this what, girl. so you said, let's go to bottom? Well, I didn't tell her, I just said, meet us at the Apollo. Uh, I bet she was over the I moon, wasn't she? Met her there, I said, right. Romantic? Go. Going to see some middle-aged men run round in pants. Brilliant. Well, it, it, it's good, it's one of the things that afterwards you've got something to talk about, haven't you? And stuff. Yeah. So and was, like, uh, was it a good gig? Yeah, it was alright. Uh, sort of bought some, Bought some opal fruits and that at the start of the night. Yeah. Uh, I think she liked that. And then we watched Bottom. Then afterwards had a bit of a chat. And then, uh. You didn't see her again, I take it? I would have done right, because she was alright looking and everything. Yeah. But when <laughs> we were, when we were chatting, she said, uh. She had a, a problem with a marrow. Marrow what? and that. <laughs> she what? She had a problem with a marrow. She had a problem with her marrow? Yeah. Uh, you mean her bone marrow? Yeah. Oh! I thought you meant she had one stuck of her fanny. No, just, just a- <laughs> Thanks for that, Rick. That's an image I take <laughs> out of my head. <laughs> no, when did I- Oh, I see, a marrow. I think a marrow. it's a marrow. Her marrow. 
And is is that serious? That. Well, see, I just was put off it because I thought. If you well, start... I, I think it's more serious than the problem with a marrow. Yeah, I with mean, a with a marrow, with a marrow, and that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an idea if you're bored with. But I love it. It's, I love it. Everything he says is like someone from Kez. It was <laughs> just that thing. That the, you didn't want to go out with a girl who might be ill in some way. Well, yeah, I thought, what's the point in spending time with her, spending money on her and stuff, and then she's gonna die on me? Oh! No, 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 but seriously. God! No, but I'm just, but, you see, this is what annoys me. Oh, you asked oh, me to be honest, oh. but I'm just saying, what's the point in me getting upset and stuff? Oh, no, but it's not the, it was the, one thing is then, what's the point in spending money on her if she's gonna die anyway? Do you gotta realise that's no. not a normal thing to say? No, but what's the point in getting to really like to know, you know, knowing someone and thinking, oh, that she's really nice, I want to spend my life with her. It's good that she told me when she did. Oh, Carl! What, during bottom? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, this is the most amazing thing you've ever said! What, Steve, <laughs> don't you, don't you understand what I'm saying? But no, because, what, well, firstly, it's the assumption that she's gonna drop dead and well, you're gonna I think, well, I'm not a doctor, I'm not I don't know what, what, what it means when you've got a problem with a marrow and that, but she looked pretty serious when she was talking about it. So I was like, oh. <laughs> Christ almighty! Oh, I don't God. understand what's so bad about it. Play a record! I'll tell you, I'll explain to her during the break. Play a record. Some libertines? Yeah. If you're morally objectionable, why not email <laughs> ripperjectures8 at xfm.co.uk? It's okay, he's an idiot. True. <laughs> Molly Chambers, Kings of Leon on XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Steve, yes. I want to talk to you. Uh, I think it was, uh, it might have been Wednesday night, I was uh, in the pub, phone goes, and Carl goes, you're watching that thing about parasites. Right. I went, no I'm out, he went, oh, fellow with a maggot in his head. Fellow with a maggot in his head? Yeah. And he goes, oh no, he's pulling it out now, oh, oh, God. I said, well, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll, I get it, I get it, I said, yeah, see you later. For about five minutes later, I get a message on my phone, beep, beep, I look at it, it just says, oh no, there's a fella with his fish up his cock now. There's a fella with a fish up his cock? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Do you want to explain that, Carl? Is it one of those little ones that swim up if you're having a slash in the Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? But it was, it was still, like, stuff like that, it started off with, uh... What does the fish do when it gets in there? Just sits there. <laughs> why is it, why? Well, what else can it do? <laughs> no, but why does it go up there? Uh, don't know, I didn't listen to that bit. There's a bit, uh, there's a bit, there's a bit, he started off with a fella who, uh, had a bit of meat and got a tapeworm inside him. Yeah. And he grew it for however long and then it came out at the end it was about seven foot long. On purpose? Yeah, he did it on purpose, yeah, for the, for the program, right? I think it, yeah. Probably slimming, isn't it? Well, I was thinking that. Could, you know, I mean, you're a fan of Waller. Could he purposely have about eight of them? <laughs> what, Rick Waller? Yeah. It's a good idea. Because, because they were saying how they, they eat, you know, a lot of stuff when they're in you, they just eat all Well, they the... take, they take enough so you don't die and nor do they, yeah. But, I mean, you've got to keep taking them out, haven't you? Because you'll still have the same weight, because it's got to go somewhere. So you'll have them in you. you what you got to do is, like, let them eat your meal and then take them out. Do you think worm watchers will ca <laughs> catch on? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that happened, right? And then, uh, yeah, there was a woman with a, with a maggot in her head. A woman with a maggot in yeah, her head? Yeah, just, she went on holiday, it got in there somehow. <laughs> and, uh... Stow away. It just, just, oh, it was, it was massive. And the thing is, she had a hole in her head and she's there being interviewed with the doctor, like, and you can see it just sort of sticking its head out. Like, do you know when you see a cartoon with a, a maggot in an apple? Yeah. And it looks out, and looks around like that. Yeah. Why didn't they just take it out there and then? I think they could have done, but the doctor's messing about. It's like, well, it's good for the show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and they left it in right, there. Right, that's libelous. Well. That is libelous. But I found it weird, why not just grab it? Wait, wait. Because <laughs> oh, there must be a reason. There must be one of those medical reasons that you don't really know about, Carl. Right. And another bit, this, this was the best one, right? <laughs> grab it! Right, there's this fella, <laughs> and he was, uh, he was, he was on his bike, right, yeah. cycling, cycling to work or whatever, and, uh, he sort of sees this thing in the corner of his eye. Right? Literally in the corner of his eye. 
Or you mean he yeah, saw something? He just something said he saw something. He saw something. Okay, yeah. thought, what's that? Yeah. So he thought, oh, doesn't matter, whatever. And he, uh, he stops off at a cafe, right, yeah. get a little, uh, little scone, the tea or whatever. <laughs> and he goes in there, and he's, he's sat down, and the waiter comes over, he says, uh, yeah, what do you want? He says, I'll have a scone and a tea. He goes, all right then. So he goes to get it, comes back, as he puts the tea and the scone down, his face is like, what, what is that, right? Like a look of frightenedness on yeah. his face, <laughs> right? Drops the tea and legs it. So the fella's going, what, what, what? So he legs it after the bloke and goes, what? And he says, oh, something came out of your nose. That was massive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, something came out of the nose. It's all true that. because people would have watched it, so don't start saying Sorry, it Sorry, but happen. hang on, I just need to clarify. The guy I on don't, the bike- I don't believe he ran away. I don't it? believe he legged it. I don't, oh. have, I don't believe he had a look of frightenedness <laughs> on his face, and I don't believe he said something massive came out your nose. <laughs> Wait and, a and I don't even believe he had a cup of tea in the scone. <laughs> These are the things that I think are embellished. <laughs> <laughs> but who had something coming out of his nose? Was it the guy serving the scone? The one who was on the bike who, who ordered the scone. Yeah, but what it was came it? Out of his nose. Yeah, what was it came out of his nose? Right, so he goes home. <laughs> And he thinks, I've got to sort this out because it's not good and that, so he's But what? No, it was out of his nose. What, so you mean it poked out of his nose, it didn't come out. <laughs> it just said hello and then it- It was like the maggot in the head. Yeah, he just yeah. Popped, it just popped his head out, had a look around and went back in. And why did like, the bloke- Why did the bloke <laughs> drop the tea and run? Well, it's, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, so- So he goes home. He goes yeah. home and he goes, oh, God, you know. So he sits in front of the mirror and he's sat there waiting. <laughs> this thing comes out. Uh, again, sort of looks round, goes back in again, so he goes, oh. <laughs> no scones. Right? <laughs> no, he doesn't. So he goes, I've got to sort this out. He goes to the doctors, yeah. says to the doctor, I've got something up my nose, it just keeps coming out and having a look round, going back in. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't so say that. The doctors, so the doctor's like, oh, I haven't heard of that before. Right? <laughs> Didn't say that. So, <laughs> so sat there, he does it again, the doctor looks, you know, frightened again. runs away? Yeah. He had a look of fr d medical frightenedness. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped his stethoscope and yeah. legged it. No, he <laughs> said, he said, I know what it was. So what? what? So you got a leech up your nose. He had a leech about that long. What's radio? Well, how long's that? Four inches. Four inches coming out of his nose. <sighs> Next time it stuck its head out, he grabbed it, pulled it out. That's horrible though, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Can I just remind people, <laughs> uh, just let people know, when Carl was saying, it was about that long, and Ricky said four inches. He was using his fingers. Oh yeah, he didn't have his no was nothing else. The yeah. feather out, no. So he had a leech up his nose. How did he get the leech up his nose? I don't know, again, <sighs> that, that, I'm not that bothered about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> All the footage and stuff. Oh, player records. Program. Yeah. It's just the same. He just sees that. He gets past. He doesn't read on. Mm. His education is just sound bites, bites and uh, uh, self embellishment in his own head. Yeah. Well, it's funny, like he gets he gets all his news from Ananova and he just reads oh. the headline. Yeah. And yeah. and he just doesn't bother reading it. it, it but you know he he considers that education. He well, gets annoyed if you think that you, more information so you is useful. Don't get going on that. Oh, we'll talk about that later. If you I'll tell you what. Go. Right. Okay. Uh, after. Okay. We're going to play a song now, and um, I'm going to tell London Carl's confusion over evolution. Right. Better you two? Oh, brilliant. Sweet. Yeah. 24.9 actually, I want to think about it. Yeah. On XFM, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. So, we're with Carl. In the week, so well, what can we do this week? I'll say, well, don't do rockbusters. That's dead in the water. I hope the, uh, I hope the listening public agree with me. Um, he's going, well, you know, why don't I teach stuff again? Remember what I taught you last week? I went, no, no idea. Were well, you joking? I went, no. Um, and it was, he went, Ivan the Terrible goes out of fella's eyes. Yeah. He actually said Ivan the Terrible at the time. Yeah. So I can't remember. This was a man who had built yeah. something for Ivan the Terrible, and then but, Ivan but, but his idea of education is telling someone something that knows more about the subject than him, so they can correct him when yeah. he's telling them it. And uh, so I said, "Well, I don't know." Uh, uh, and he gets annoyed that me and you are dubious against monkeys who perform bank robberies. And he goes, "But you leave, but you believe in Newton." 
<laughs> he doesn't know the difference. I was trying to explain the laws of the universe, yeah. right? He was going, what, what do you do? And so all I come up with, I, some, I thought something interesting. You know when you ch tell a child maths, you say you've got three potatoes and you've got four potatoes? Yeah. I have to do that with science to Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ended up saying, imagine you're in a shopping trolley with loads of house bricks. If you throw the house bricks out, you'll go the other way. He loved that. Right. He up, didn't you? Hmm. Because I didn't know that, that, that would happen. And it's, it's sort of useful to know. It sort of explained a bit to me and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's, that's why I like doing stuff every week. I think listeners go away going, well, I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Carl, Carl told me something there. They forget it instantly, just like we do. We We're don't. friends of yours and we forget it instantly. No, the annoying thing with you is, Steve, not so much, Ricky, at least they'll listen now and again, you'll just dismiss stuff straight away. <laughs> I but taught Carl, you loads of stuff <laughs> yesterday, I taught you loads of stuff. But Carl, what you consider education- <laughs> Well, hang on, what you consider education, I consider tittle-tattle. Well. It's not education, do you know what I mean? You seem to think it's education, it's just kind of gossip, stories you've sort of half read. Right, alright, example of yesterday. Goldfish have longer memories than people think they do. Yeah. You, you said no, it's, uh, it's rubbish. No, we didn't, we no, said we're gonna have to get really. information from. Yeah. It's not, there's not enough information there for it to be educational. Mm. Because you, what you because it's also relative. Think. I don't because know. because the, because that as a statement, it has no objectivity. Uh, Goldfish's memories are longer than some people think. That isn't a fact. <laughs> exactly. Because uh, we don't know how how long do people think a goldfish's memory is. Do you see what that isn't a fact? Whereas law and uh, uh, Newton's uh, laws of physics and the universe right, are. Right. Yeah, but it was just just a little thing. Um. And I taught you more than that. I said, I said about there's loads of Chinese people. If you put them in a line, you can't get to the end of it. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. There's there's loads of Chinese people. We know that, but what? If we put them in a line, we can't get to the end. But of then it. If we just just say there's about a billion you know, Chinese people in the world. But what really annoys me is right. I read something on the internet the other day because I'm always trying to learn stuff. Yeah, there no, you are. I know you are. Right. Yeah. And you're having a go at me because you're saying, well, what does that mean? Yeah, there was a report on, I think it was Ananova or BBC News website, it said, the world may end in 32 million years. Right, first of all it says may, doesn't say it will, and yeah. 32 million, who's gonna argue with that? And yet they, they're allowed to put that on a website, you, you're not having to go at them. No, but, but you didn't read on. Not, there's more information. It wasn't like, that, wasn't a, that wasn't meant to be a news flash to worry people. That was like, that was like, oh, scientists have discovered that possibility there. That was just like... Yeah, but again, possibility. No, but Carl, yeah, but it's the eight other paragraphs that you haven't read. You see, that'll have to give explanations to why to they think that might happen. So therefore it becomes a news item, it becomes educational. It's not just the headline, the bullet point, the headline, you know the headline's just supposed to, it's supposed to draw you into the story so you read on. That's not all the I information. Was, but then I was trying to come up with things to, um, to excite you and I realised that I was opening a can of worms. Um, I, I was trying to come up with facts for him, he was going, well, give me facts. So I said, um, I said, oh, okay, uh, why can't an owl, uh, why does an owl have to turn its sort of head 180 degrees? And I said, it's because the eyes are so large, as it has a huge focal point for its sight, that it, they can't move within the skull, right? And he went, well, why'd they do that? Why don't they just do it, give them normal eyes, and let, and then after I've turned their head? I went, what do you mean? Why didn't they? He went, well, whoever did that? I went, well, it was evolution. It was, uh, he went, right. He went, he went, it's like giraffes. I read that giraffes grew their necks to eat food. I said, well, didn't, they didn't grow their necks to get the food. Uh, the ones that uh, had upshots lived longer and so got the food and passed on their, he went, yeah, but why didn't they just give him wings? I went, why didn't who just give him wings? He got angry and went, whoever gave him the necks! <laughs> <laughs> this, his understanding of evolution made me fall on the floor. Who do you imagine is they? Because you don't believe in God, do you? So who is it you imagine is they? Well, whoever made us sorted us out. <laughs> <laughs> who? <laughs> I don't uh, know, it just happens, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. Well, there's Carl, no, listen, there's I... no will to evolution. It's I, natural selection, isn't it? I still it? don't get it though, we talked about an hour about, about an hour, didn't we? I know. I yeah, but to be fair, I watched as Ricky tried to give you actually what was quite a concise and educated version of uh, evolution. He tried to explain it to you, and I have never seen a person lose interest quicker. But I used, I, I tried to use, uh, actual fact, then I tried to use metaphor and analogy, then I showed you some computer programs to show what biofeedback is and everything. I tried all these things, and Steve's right, uh, you were looking out the window. Have you ever spoken, Carl, to someone who's got Alzheimer's disease? <laughs> And you try to explain who you are, and they're listening, and then they, that's right. what you're like. It's extraordinary. But listen, seriously, I went home, I found this book, I found a couple of facts which I think are more up your street. Evolution is a little bit complicated, a little bit big. But this one, I think, I think we may have mentioned it before, I think you'll like this. This is from a book of facts and trivia. 
The Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. Yeah. That's interesting to you, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any more there? I'll see if I can find Oh, he's there. interested. Yeah. Can get see. the staff. That did you, happen, you, yeah? You pay peanuts, that definitely happened, you yeah. get monkeys. <laughs> and then what did they go off and do after that? Well, it doesn't say- so I love the fact that he thinks- right. Okay, so in his mind, <laughs> it's the other monkey going, it's 5.30, I'm off, you know I was going early today, and they go off maybe dancing or something, or they come in late. No, uh, I think you th I think you, what, I, I assumed what you meant there is that that was their first career move. And yeah, then they well, went they, on, yeah. it's like actors waiting to be discovered. <laughs> play a record! Uh, just one more before you play a record. Oh, you like this. Peter the Great, you ever heard of Peter the Great? No. Okay, well anyway, Peter the Great had his wife's lover oh, executed. you'll love this, Carl. Right, so he, he, his wife had a lover, he had him executed, and he put his head into a jar of alcohol, and his wife had to keep it in her bedroom. Do you understand? That's every time she saw every morning she'd wake up, and there was her lover's head who, in a jar. Who took his head off? He took he took his own head off. <laughs> Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> she had a lover. And, oh, never Forget mind. It. Never Forget mind. Mad World on XFM. We just had a <laughs> we just had a text, Rick, from Andrew Barnes. He says he did he watched the same documentary. It would appear yeah. as Rick Carl did in the week. And he says here, just to clarify, the leech nose man got it up there when drinking from a muddy stream. Uh, and he goes on. One can only imagine the frightened and the sick. <laughs> oh, oh, God! <laughs> Ex explain to him once more to what, what what happened with Peter the Great. All right. So we've got Peter the Great. Yeah. Okay. And his wife. Had a lover. As another site. man. Another man. Not uh, Peter the Great. She, she was having an affair with someone else. Right. And Peter the Great, he found out about that. Okay. Yeah. So he sliced off this bloke's head, he killed him, he executed him. Right. You, you, you with me so far? But the fella who, who- Oh, she Jesus. Was, she was seen for a bit. Yeah, there's only two fellas involved There's two there, people yeah. involved. One's Peter the Great, the other one's right, not. Right. The guy that's not Peter the Great- Derek- Derek the- the- <laughs> Derek the Terrible. Derek the Rubbish. Yeah. Right? He's having an affair with Peter the Great's missus. So Peter the Great slices off his head, puts it inside a jar of alcohol to preserve it, and puts it in his wife's bedroom. So every morning she wakes up, she sees her dead lover's head. You, you'd have thought he wouldn't have wanted to remember, wouldn't you? Oh. Best put bury the head so she can't don't remember. Well, it was a reminder so as not to put it about. <laughs> and did it work? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I love that. Again, <laughs> that to me is an amazing thing to do. And you go, did it work? <laughs> I mean, you've got quite an interesting mind, actually. I mean, you are, in some ways, really, really bright and intelligent. I, I love the way you think. Uh, you're one of the cleverest blokes, in some ways, that I know. Hello, it says I've got common sense. Well, yeah. And that's, that's more important than knowing about, you know, God But it's, it's enough. what, it, it, you really, you <laughs> It's like you follow the subplot, which is quite an interesting thing, do you know what I mean? It's like, it, it, you tell you a story, you'll always pick up on something that I didn't even think was an important bit. It's like you're always, you're, you're looking out of the window all the time. So what's important about that head thing? The, what do you the, mean? The head in the jar, what's, so it's what a should I be? It's a grotesque thing to do. It's, it's, it, it shows, yeah, um, ego, power, cruelty, and revenge. Although I think it probably did work, because he is called Peter the Great. Yeah. So you'd assume he got, he got it right. Yeah. I don't see how you can query that. That's the sort of facts you give us. You see now, you're on the other side of the fence, and you've got questions, just like we've always got questions. No, but in Carl's thing, it would have been, turns out, some weird happened, right, and he was still alive. <laughs> yeah. And so she was still having sex with body, and yeah. his head was watching. Yeah. And Peter the Great didn't even know. See how he's I, I, understand, I understand what what you're saying. Now I've learned some other stuff, so we'll I'll I'll see if I can, you know, educate you a bit before three. But I want to know. See what I tell you. What education I want. I want to know what sort of things I can buy this weekend. Butt plugs. No. Have you got any adverts? Oh yeah. Excellent. My life and no doubt on XFM, the yeah. version of the Talk Talk Love song. It. Love it. You've enjoyed that, Rick. Yeah, on XFM 104.9. Right, Carl. This is where he shines. This is where Carl gets, this is what Carl gets Mondays off for. Yeah. Um. Okay, Carl, what is it? You want to explain this? It's the bit when, uh, 
I'm in a film and uh, sort of edit me into it so I'm like an actor in a major film. Yeah. We've done Kez, we've done One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Shining, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this week, it's A Few Good Men. Brilliant okay. film, brilliant with, film. With uh, Jack Nicholson and that. Yeah. Uh, so you listen to this and uh, will we give the question later on? Probably. Let's give it after this. All right. Yeah, we'll give it after the week All right. a bit. Uh, I haven't really got one sorted, but I'll think of one once it's on. <laughs> so, uh, have a listen to this, take everything in, and yeah. then question at the end. So, yeah. it's a scene where it's a court case. Yeah. All right? All right. All good, rise! Then. Call your witness. <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's just coming now. All right, Jack. Colonel. I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. Defense counsel will address the witness as Colonel or Sir. All right. All right, Colonel. A bit smart today with all the, uh, all the army stuff on. You ever served in an infantry unit, son? Nah. Brother did. He was, uh, he was in the army. Got kicked out, though, because, because he, uh, he went for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> Weird, that, innit? No, it's not. It's tragic. Mm. I'll say it's tragic. I'll show you something tragic. I always um, carry this book around with me. I always show it to people. It's got like uh, the top 50 weird people in the world in it. All right? It's all sorts of weird stuff in it. Uh, look at this one here. It's a fella, right? He's got two heads. And the weird thing is, right, is the top 50 weird people in the world. He's at number 50, he's got two heads. Right? Makes you wonder what's going to be at number one, doesn't it? Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? No, but look at it. Imagine if you were his mate. You wouldn't get a word in edgeways, would you? If you Maybe he didn't have any friends. Mm, probably right, they say, don't they? They say two's company, three's a crowd, so... Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. Yeah, I've got loads more. For this fellow at number 36, look at him. Three legs. Little fellow with three legs, right? Guess what his job is? My answer is I don't have the first damn clue. Well, I'll tell you. He's a juggler. I beg your pardon? He's a juggler. This is ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. You're probably thinking what I'm thinking. Why wasn't he a footballer? The great at keep you up, isn't that? Isn't he? I'll answer the question. You want answers? Yeah, it's just, it's just that I'd like to know the truth. Behind. You can't handle the truth, gentlemen. Well, I've paid for the book, so I think I'm entitled to know why. I don't did. give a damn what you think you are entitled to. You better get somewhere fast with this, Lieutenant. What about this one then? This lad here, he's 12 years old. He looks 48. What do you, what do you think? No. Why not though? You, you said you didn't want to know any more about the juggler. You didn't say you didn't want I to know, know any more I about I know what I said. I don't have to have it read back to me like All I'm... All right. Lieutenant, do you have anything further for this witness? Well, just wanted to know if you thought Mr. Webfoot at number 42 should have took up swimming, but... Absolutely. I'd say that now, wouldn't you? Forget it. <laughs> uh, well, I, mean, I don't know what to say, really. That's Carl Pilkinson in the uh, film A Few Good Men with Jack Nicholson, acting alongside Jack, and I have to say giving him a run for his money. I think Carl is a really good actor. Mm. I genuinely think that. Should we put him in some? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay. Right, what's the question? What's the, what's his forte, do you think? Just sort of, uh, playing that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay. Sort of deep stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we can sort that out. Think of a question there, out of that little lot. Um, you, you've not got one? Uh, well, well, I've got, what, what, um, who was at number 30? Six, whatever it was. What was it? I don't know. Uh, let's, let's... <laughs> who's number 50? Who was at number 50? Yeah, alright then. Okay. Yeah, who's number... Who, what, yeah. What, yeah, what was odd about the guy who was at number 50 in the and 50 the weirdest people mm. on the list? And just text in, uh, 83XFM and put your address on there as well and that. What Brilliant. places are there, Carl? Uh, loads of stuff. Yeah. Let me have a look Oh, that's actually not bad. There's, um, Lord of the Rings on there. Michael Palin's Around the World in 80 Days. If you've not had a chance to see that yet, it's been repeated about 80 times. <laughs> um, <laughs> look Around You, which is an excellent show. That's yeah, really it's funny brilliant. That. Uh, there's some other good stuff. It's not too bad. And also the, um, relatively poor stand-up DVD, Ricky Gervais' live <laughs> show, which is uh, <laughs> mediocre. Can't give him away. Yeah. Alright. And, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can win all those pr prizes if you can answer which question again? 
Who, uh, who was the fella who was at number 15 in my book? What was up oh, with him? Excellent. Alright, <laughs> so let's, uh, got to play, uh... Thorns. And Thorns? That's the most beautiful track I I've been- I- I can't get enough of this. There's no- you'll love it. You'll love this. Carl, come on, what's the matter with you? What? Thorns. No- no blue sky. Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't that a great track? It's all right, yeah. Just had an email, yeah. That woman who opened the office script could have her head cut off, apparently. When a letter is posted, it becomes the property of the Queen until it reaches the person it was meant for. By opening it, she's committed treason and could be killed. I don't know if you're familiar with this story, Carl, are you? Go on. Apparently, uh, some copies of the office Christmas specials, scripts, got sent to the wrong address. Some woman. And, uh... Insta I mean, I don't know what you do in that situation. Normally, if I get mail that's not addressed to me, I just put it, give it to the postman or put it back in the post box. Radio One tried to speak to her, but apparently, um, she's got a gag in order, which makes us think that she sold it to the Sunday. So oh, we right. we read it. We read the plot yeah. of the office tomorrow yeah. in the Sunday papers, which uh, ruin it for some people. Ruin it for a lot of people, yeah. But the other thing is, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, if it was sent to her, obviously her name wasn't on it. Oh. If that's if that's true, in which case. I think that's quite a serious offence, isn't it? Well, I, would, I would hope so. I mean, I would hope that, yeah, if I said but, something in an envelope, it was... But the BBC, oh, Ash, actually, the BBC, thinks that because the person it, they said it was meant to be sent to got his, he thinks maybe that's an excuse. Maybe someone gave her the script and said, don't tell her it, don't say it came from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, maybe she's protected someone, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I mean, if, if that is... Well, either way, either way, don't sell it to a newspaper. Well, I, yeah. It's just, it's just the kind of mercenary nature of it that I loathe, you know, it's the fact that, and the fact that it's only just now makes me wonder if she had it there lying around in the off, in, in her house and someone said to her, well why don't you go to the papers? Yeah. Try and flog it. But I just yeah. don't think it's, I don't think she's gonna get a lot for it, cause people are gonna see it soon, it's not like it's the hit the diaries. Well, they're not I mean? very well written. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I'll tell you what I'm frustrated by, it's just the fact that it's like we've worked hard to give people some kind of pleasure. For this Christmas, you know, because a lot of people are very depressed, Rick, very yeah. low at this time of year. They've not got what they wanted. But We're trying to cheer them up, giving a bit of happiness. Yeah, but I think she'll be happy if she gets a lot of money. True, true. I don't know. I think it's. I think it's just tacky, really. It's like, well, I just say, if you're a fan of the show and you don't want to know what happens, then don't read the Sundays tomorrow, or at least avoid it when it says we tell you what. The papers might not ruin it. The papers might go. We've got them, but we're not going to ruin it for people. Well, that'd, that'd be a nice, be, be a nice gesture. But uh, I don't all, know. I, I, all I can say is, it's a good job. That I send out the prizes. <laughs> so, because that Michael Palin around the world in 80 days will be going to the person who won it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if someone else receives it, they better not try and, do you know yeah. what I mean, keep it. It should go to the winner. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. That is a very good point. Mm. So, be warned. Don't open things that weren't addressed to you. Yeah. I Pandora's box. Them, as a, there's some sort of lesson there. Yeah. What happened? All the evils of the world, wasn't it? Pretty much. What? Yeah. Oh, don't oh, try to explain brilliant. it to her, Carl. No, Pandora's box. Go on. Well, told not to open it, opened it, released all the evils that are in the world now. But did, did the person say if you open it, loads of evil will come it's out? It's not true. It's not true. It didn't really happen. It's not like evolution. It's not the truth. But you remember that? Yeah, you won't listen to some of my stuff. That goldfish and stuff. No, it's not that we don't listen to it. it it's that you would pass off how all the evils in the world got here. Because on Anna Nova it would be, uh, Pandora opens box! <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of headlines. <laughs> oh, here we go, okay, look, uh, yeah, imagine if Pilkington was on News at 10, okay? We should just explain, you cannot be bothered to read an entire news story. You get everything you need from a headline, don't you? Well, I think it's enough. I think if they did- Well, the let's news... see, let's see, let's see if this is enough. No. Let's see right, if this, okay. if Trent McDonald just read this on the news at 10, it'd be shorter and you'd get back to the, the football, whatever. Yeah, the there we go. And here is the news at 2.15 with Carl Pilkington. Bong! Man who walks backwards around lake falls in. <laughs> <laughs> Bong! Uh, Chinese woman eats dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bong! Uh, man lives in rubbish dump for 10 years. <laughs> Brilliant. Bong! Czech family says they've got a rabbit with three knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Done. Sorry, can you just read a little bit more of the Czech family with three knobs? Uh, Just about a family. Not read it to yourself. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he, he can't read it to himself. I told him to read it to himself. We still hear it. No, he wasn't. I could see his lips moving. <laughs> Go on. Just this fella who, uh, had three rabbits. Right, just think of this is Trevor McDonald. Yeah. Okay, carry on, Carl. Okay, oh, well, here's the news. Right, good. Brilliant. Go on. There's a fella, he's got, he's got three rabbits and that, and then, uh, <laughs> He checks them out, right? Yeah. Two of the rabbits have got two knobs each. Right. And he goes, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Sure. And they're ch <laughs> throwing them around, sort of chucking up, you know, showing them around the family and stuff, yeah. saying, look at that, that's weird. Picks up the third one, it's got three. Yeah. So, they ate the two with two, because they thought, they best keep the third one, because a little bit lucky in that. Yeah. It is lucky, three knobs, yeah, yeah. Now here's the sports news, and that's, <laughs> that's how it would work. Yeah, okay, <laughs> brilliant. Well, we're about the Chinese woman who eats dirt, I'm interested in that. That's it, that is the story, isn't it? What more do you need to know? It's well, I want to know a little bit more. Can you just embarrass 78 it? year old Chinese woman, she says she's 78. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder. Yeah. Is my theory. <laughs> uh, Carl's theory is that Chinese people don't age well. And so those Chinese people that say they're 112 are really only 33. Um. That's why he doesn't want to be recognised, because he doesn't want to walk out from here into Chinatown. Yeah. Go uh, on. It just says she's she's been eating soil for uh, <laughs> seventy years. She's at about ten tons of the stuff, and uh, it's done her no harm. Keep, kept her grounded. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's probably alright for you, isn't it? Because well, it passes yeah. through, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, they say, don't they? If you're having a kid, let it play in soil and that, because um, well, that's to, to get it immune, yeah, to get yeah. It, yeah. But, but uh, lots of like um, things without with, with um, sort of uh, birds and reptiles sometimes swallow um, soil and. Uh, stones, because it grinds up stuff, breaks down cellulose for them. Doesn't do you any harm. Right then. One more fact from this book for you, Carl. Apparently, officially, the Second World War is not over. It's not actually over because there's never been an official treaty signed between Germany and Russia. So it's still going on. Interesting or not? Uh, <laughs> not as good as the monkey one and... And, and, the, and the woman who eats dirt. And the Pete the Great and that. Sure. But, yeah. It is over, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it, though? That's, I get, that's what I mean about you annoying me with stuff that you go, oh, that's interesting. I don't think that is interesting. Okay. Okay. There was, uh, what was it I learnt? <laughs> what was it I learnt? <laughs> think uh, of that yeah. as a question. Well, we're all trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, go on. Leonardo, uh, DiCaprio? The, the painter. Da Vinci. Da Vinci. He could, uh, he could write with one hand, draw with the other at the same time. Right. Yeah, that's good. It's all right, that's it? interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all right. Well, if you have an interesting fact for Carl Pilkington that you think you might be, uh, intrigued by, email ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. What have we got coming up? UK. What have we got coming up? More education stuff. Some <laughs> good, good tunes and that. Yeah. And, uh, a bit of outcast. Outcast, hey ya on XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and over there, Carl Pilkington. Now we've got a new feature. Well, let's, I don't know if it should become a, a, a feature every week, Rick, I'm not sure it's got legs for that, um, no. but maybe in the absence of Rockbusters. Basically, I was looking through the pigeonhole, and we got a lot of stuff sent to us, a lot yeah. of junk, you know, yeah. stuff we don't really want. Yeah. And a lot of people, for some reason, they send begging us- Begging letters. Begging letters, a lot of that. We get sent a lot of CDs by people, bands, artists, who have not yet been signed, maybe they've knocked something together in their bedroom, they've got a band, and they just, for some reason, they want our feedback. They want us to sort of give them some thoughts on what they think, where they're going wrong, stuff like that. And I just thought, we well, basically, I was having a clear out, and I thought, why not just um, give them a little chance, you know. Yeah. Just throw them a bone, Rick. Honest, we'll, honest critique? Honest critique of some of the artists that sent us stuff. Okay, um, go These on are bands that have not been, uh, they've not got a record contract. This is like exciting. Okay, name the three bands Well, first. I'll tell you, no, we'll go through them individually and I'll hear a little snatch and then I'll get your opinions, both from you, Rick. I know you've been in the music business, you've got good general knowledge of music, yeah, you've got good yeah, taste. Yeah, big time, and big time. And also Carl Pilkington's views as well. Yeah. Um, we know what to think of them. So, uh, this go first on. band is called Kellerton Road. I'm sure they're very excited. As I said their name then, they probably can't believe it. They're phoning each other now, they're getting so excited. All friends are phoning them now. Yeah, Turn exactly. your phone off. They can't people in this band, you don't want to... Yeah. Well, okay then, Kellerton Road. Kellerton Road, play a track from them. Go. 
Skeleton Road, I think that's a track called uh, Secretly, and uh, looking on the back here, there's uh, six of them in the band, they all pretty much look the same, uh, they've got the long hair, the usual sort of look. Uh, what do you make of them, Rick? Alright. Yeah? Quite like yeah, that? Good, yeah. I mean, a bit generic, the chorus is a little bit simplistic, but I like good production, good, yeah, yeah. good music. Reminds you of something, maybe like the thrills, that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, good. Jukebox or junk box? What's junk box? It's just, I'm just trying to make it sound snappy. Jukebox don't, or junk box? Don't. Because you, you, you haven't got it. Don't okay. ever. Stick to what you're good at. Okay. Um. What, being sexy? Mm, no? just sort of watching Doctor Who and stuff. You like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I love it. Okay, then, right, okay. what's the next one? So, well, well, let's just ask Carl Pilkington's opinion. Carl, what were your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, it's alright. Yeah? Yeah. That's it, is it? Yep. <laughs> is that why you're no longer right for the enemy? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So, what's this next one you've got for us then, Carl? Uh, Toffee. Toffee. It's called Born Depressed. <laughs> oh dear. Brilliant. Is it about you? I, qu I quite like that. Yeah? I just thought a bit, yeah, a bit, bit glammy, bit underground. Yeah. What do you make of the name, Toffee? Not, I don't like the name. It's not great, is it? No, but I, I quite like that quite track. track. I'm just looking at the CD, they've made it themselves, and uh, basically the band feature on there completely nude. Oh. What do you <laughs> Well, we know what we think of that. What do you think of that, Carl? Yeah, we'll that. Let's have a look. Though. Have a look there. Well, that's no point, is it? There's quite a lot of blokes and there's one naked lady. Oh, just having a look down, just, yeah. What are you looking at the blokes? What are you looking at? Why are you looking at the blokes? That's no. Just... But you look at the knob. I can see. I can see by the way your eyes are looking. I'm looking at the woman's knob, though. Well, she won't be happy with that. No, no, that's a bloke, Carl. <laughs> yeah, that's well, where you've been going wrong. Yeah, that's the woman. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was looking at. That one, the woman's knob. So that's all right. Yeah, good. So, um, uh, so Rick, uh, hit parade or shit parade? <laughs> um, uh, oh, I don't know if it's going to be. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a hit yet because I haven't got backup. But I think we're looking more about whether they get. You a record know, deal. Do you think they deserve yeah. one? Uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, I like, yeah, I like, I, yeah, thumbs up for both of them. Okay, excellent. Well done. All right, well done. And uh, Carl, uh, play the last one then. Uh, what did uh, you make of it? Sorry, we didn't ask your opinion. We weren't interested. Um, I'd like to see him on CD UK. <laughs> 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 Just like that on, yeah. on the CD cover. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. And this right. last uh, act, I think, is this right? Picture Centre? Yeah. Picture Centre. Yeah, that's my favourite out of all of them. Good, there's a bit of Amy Mann in there. Mm -hmm. A little bit Cocteau Twins. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, no, really good. good I really, uh, really good, really intriguing that. Carl yeah. Pilkington? Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't like it, what would you say? Um, it's weird though, isn't it, music? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? It's like, it depends what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? That's alright. If you're just having a game of crib or whatever, it's just on in the background. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the thing with music, I don't think you can sort of slag any of it off. It's times, and it's, it's, depends what mood you're in and stuff. Yeah. So, uh... So, so it's a pointless, it's a pointless, pointless feature. Well, I didn't then. come up with it. No, I don't, alright, don't slag it off. Okay, we'll do that again then, I was quite enjoying that, but, okay. No, do you understand what I'm saying? Well... That it's not, it's not worth having an opinion about music? Uh, 
Well, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, um... <laughs> Imagine if he was on the panel of fame and going to be your pop idol. Yeah. That'd be great. It'd go along. And Nicky Chapman go, yeah, you, you've really improved. I really like that. I don't know what you're wearing. Dr. Fox, you were hot, baby. <laughs> I loved it. Like, like, like your legs, like all your boobs and all that. <laughs> brilliant. Come to car. Not bothered. All right. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Oh, no, we'll keep it up, you know. Keep... Yeah, and roll over DJ on XFM 104.9. All right? Carl, um, just an email, a question for you. Can you please let me know which school Carl went to? What school did he go to? Uh, Sesav. What? Sesav. Sesav? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, it was on Cecil Avenue. Cecil Avenue, in Manchester. Yeah. It's just he says, I'd like to know so that I don't send my kids to the same place. <laughs> <laughs> he also says, uh, he says, P.S., does Carl look like Gollum in Lord of the Rings? Yes. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, in fact, I was just putting a little bald wig on you, wasn't I? Like he needs one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, if it's you want some of the fun and games we have when the songs are on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah did, did it hurt? Just a little bit. The, 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 the bit that worried me is when you said, let me just staple it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was trying to get it under your chin because it looked funnier. And he was scared. Oh, I never saw it. Do you remember I did that thing with the tea towel? Have you told Steve about that? I don't think I have. It's not something I'd shout about, to be honest. Go on. Uh, went round his place. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, before you go, I must try something. Because I couldn't get squeezing hard enough. I can't, because I'm not strong enough to hurt him anymore now, or am I? Uh, uh, I think I, I can take it a bit more than I could at the start. Yeah, so I wanted to squeeze his head more, so what did I do? So he said, uh, just hang on, I've got a tea towel, he brought a tea towel in now, I need something, uh, sort of long and thin. Uh, what can I get? He's asking his girlfriend, where's that there? Comes in with a spatula, mm -hmm. right? He puts the tea towel on my head, uh, and manages to sort of put the spatula in and turn it round so that the tea towel is tightening on my head. Yeah. <laughs> using little pressure, would you say, from you? Yeah, just little, it's brilliant, it's like a tourniquet, and I just turned it a little bit, and he screamed almost straight away, didn't you? It hurts. <laughs> but so, I don't, I, but, but why did you think that was good? When would you need to use that tool? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I did it on my other board mate, Rob, who was over, and he screamed as well. Cause he, he just put a tea towel around, like a little, uh, bandana, just stick the wooden spoon down the back, just turn it, and it, it's even half a turn, isn't it? Mm. And it really... Hopefully children listening will be trying that on their phones. <laughs> No, no, they won't. Don't try that at home. Um, I've got another fact for you, Carl. It might be of interest to you. It's the final one. The ancient Babylonians had Can few... What? Can just stop you there? What's a Babylonian? <laughs> <laughs> My head's gonna burst! What do you mean, what's a Babylonian? I've never heard of one. No, but we'll think. Work out. What's an Evertonian? Someone who supports Everton? Well, or from from Liverpool. Yeah, so what's a Babylonian? It's from Baba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well anyway, so people from Baba, ancient Baba, they didn't have any, very many doctors in those days, alright? Because they felt that illness, illnesses should be left to the wisdom of the public, right? So if you were sick, okay, you were, pla you were placed in the city centre, right, and then a pass I'm sorry, Baba. That's sorry, Baba. And, uh, a passerby who had suffered from the same ailment, or who had seen it treated in the past, they would pass by, they would give them advice on how <laughs> to be cured. Do you understand? So there'd be no doctor, it's just people passing by would see, they'd say, what's wrong with you? And they'd say, well, blah, 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 I've had the same thing, here's some advice. And pedestrians were forbidden to pass such an individual without inquiring about the complaint and prescribing for it if they knew how to. So hang on, so there's someone ill. Yep. It's outside the town hall. Yeah. Uh, people walk past, go, what's up with you? They yeah. go, oh, my foot hurts, and they go, You've got to do this to get rid of yeah. that. Yeah. And were they ever right? Well, what do you mean? Were they ever right? Well, uh, how do we know? <laughs> what are you telling me? What? What have you just told me? What am I meant to take from that? You just said strangers sort of say, you've got that wrong with you. 
Yeah. I think he's sulking. I don't think he's ever gonna take anything we tell him again because we don't- No, but I don't like the fact that goes, well, uh, um, uh, 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 it, um, uh, monkey, monkeys can do armed robberies and we go, no they can't. I don't understand what the problem is. But how is that different from telling me that a Chinese woman ate dirt? <laughs> how is that not the same sort of thing? Because that's weird. Someone sat in Trafalgar Square going, I've got a day, can I go take some Nurofen? Isn't, isn't shocking. I'm not a doctor, I've given a bit of advice. But neither is the dirt lady. She's not particularly interesting. Neither of them are particularly interesting. I'm just trying to give you an example of the same sort of drivel you feed us every week. Would you uh, sort of have tea round at her house? It's weird. The Chinese woman. Right, so it's weird. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It's weirdness that you're interested in. See, I thought that you were actually interested in sort of learning that interesting well, sort of stuff. But if it's weird, it helps. <laughs> if I it's weird, it helps. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be major news. The other day there was something about, uh, this, this fella who, I think he wanted to be an actor, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, he was trying all his life to be an actor. Couldn't get a gig anywhere, right? So when he died, he said, right, I'm gonna leave all my money to the theatre as long as that theatre uses my skull in that, in that play they do with the head. Hamlet. In Hamlet. So that's that sort of news, and what? it's weird. Right. What money did he have if he'd been struggling actor? <laughs> he had he had some money in that. What did he do? I don't know. Oh, that's matter. what I'm interested in. What he did? Yeah, no, that's what me and Steve. Matter, yeah, and that's what me and Steve are interested in. What he did? How he earned his money? So yeah, because you, you were going to educate us this week with some interesting facts. Oh, yeah, come on. Then. Is that it, or have you got more? Well, that, that's weird. That's, but that's not educational. You didn't give me his name, you didn't give me when, you didn't give me what no, theatre. No, but also you to take from it, do you know what I mean? If people listen and go, oh, I'm a bit like that. It's like, if, if you've got to have, be dead and have your skull on stage, that isn't the job for you. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. If it takes that much, c give it up, do something else. Right? What? Uh, what else have I taught you? I don't know. You haven't taught us, so you've, uh, you've never taught me anything. See, we'll just have to sort of... What, agree to disagree? Right. I don't know what you can sort of learn from this. Go on then. Uh, seven up, the drink. Yeah. Right. This is, we're, on, we're actually on air now, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, this is right, it. Right, okay. This, is this, it, this, this is a radio show yep. that we're paid Forget for. That, then. Forget no, that, come then. on, no, come on, seven up. <sighs> it's not really, not interesting. It's important, not interesting. No, it's not interesting. Go important. on, no, come well, on then. Come the, on. Little, the little red dot, that's above the seven on the can, do you know, it's the seven yeah. up and the little yeah. red dot. Yeah. That red dot's there because the creator of it, uh, was an albino, and he had red eyes, and he had that little thing there, that's his little trademark. Is that true? It's true. That's quite interesting. Right then. So mm. that's what I'm saying. It's not that important, but it's interesting. If it's true, that's interesting. It isn't, it's true and it's interesting. Okay, that's good. You Any know, more? You know Coke used to contain, um, real cocaine? So well, like, they, they used to be medicines, didn't they? Tonics, yeah. No, they were medicines. I read that, um, tomato ketchup and Coca-Cola. Started off as medicines. Probably not a medicine, probably more of a tonic, because it's probably a pick, pick me up, wasn't it? If I had coke in it and caffeine and sugar, and same as ketchup, probably lots of vitamin C and lots of sugar, it was probably more of a tonic. It wasn't really a medicine. They didn't say cancer. Have this one in your chips. It's an HP. It wasn't a medicine, it was. Well, it was, kind of. Alright, okay, exactly. let's agree to disagree on that particular one. Okay, alright, yeah. Um, Is that it, Carl? What else? You've, yeah, you've, the you've given us the 7 up thing, okay. Uh, I've told you about the goldfish. Not really, but yeah. Uh You didn't tell us anything about goldfish. This is your fact, right? You know what? A goldfish might might have longer memories than some people think. <laughs> That's not a fact. That, that under no circumstances would imagine imagine Magnus Magnuson saying, uh <laughs> what animals might have longer <laughs> memories than most people think? This is goldfish, correct? <laughs> Imagine that as a question. How is that a fact? If you ever have children, are you going to educate them with this kind of drivel? Is this how you're going to raise your kids? So their minds just pump that, for that'd the That'd be my job. I keep them interested with stuff like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Suzanne does the proper stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you agree there is some proper stuff? Yeah, but I wouldn't make him do it. I'd just sort of leave the book there, and then if he read it, I'd go, that's good. That is what book would you think? What, the 50th, most <laughs> freakiest people ever to be born? Give him that to start with. <laughs> would you t what, what, what would you tell me your favourite was? The little fella who's playing the keyboard? That or the three-legged fella. <laughs> yeah, okay. So he's learnt that. That's the first day at school. What, what would you teach him the second day at school? 
I know, because it, uh, it, it, why, it, why do owls have to turn 180 degrees to look the other way? Because they've got big eyes. Yeah, and what's that mean? What do you mean, what's can it I, mean? Can I just, I don't think you should have children. <laughs> well, right. Suzanne's always saying, you know, that's, you know, she'd, she'd like to hear tiny feet running around the flat. So. Yeah. I just said, let's get a, let's get a little midget cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> right, haven't got long, we better give the winner. We've got monkey news coming up. We haven't really got any monkey news. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? There's nothing going on, seriously. Don't talk, what do the you mean? The last few weeks, I've been telling you. No, 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 I, right, right, this really annoys me when you say there's nothing going on, because you call it monkey news, but it's not yeah. monkey news. You have stories, uh, dubious well, stories, I've shut up a minute, about chip, it's always chimps, which annoys me you call it monkey because they're apes, right? And it's often from the 18th century, mm -hmm. so it's not news anyway. So don't tell me there's no monkey no, news what I'm this week. Is if there's monkey news worth doing, I'll know about it. <laughs> and there isn't anything, right. so let's leave. Right, it. okay, you are going to give me some monkey news. Well, or, okay, right, but I tell you, I'm telling you, you are going to give me some monkey news, or we're not leaving. Right, well, my mum sent me some. Right. right. I got a little letter from her doing the usual sort of stuff, telling me what she'd been up to and that. Uh, it was a little thing about, uh, somewhere in Lincolnshire or something. Right, To do a bit of, uh, do a bit of monkey throwing. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Because some fella got attacked by one once, and sort of to remember him, on this certain day they go, oh, it was today, wasn't it? And that fella got attacked by a little monkey and that. And he, uh, something about chucking monkeys about. That's horrible. I don't know if they're real, I think it's just like to remember. Alright. But that's, that's the only sort of stuff that's knocking about out there. <laughs> but it's not, that well, that's not I've got my mum and dad on it, looking all the time. <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> yeah, there must be more monkey news than that. There isn't nothing, go I mean there's, there's bits and pieces, there was a bit about Donna Rare, how when she has a kid she's gonna let a gorilla look after it for a week or something. But apart from that, it's, that's it's dead out true. there. That's probably true. Well, I don't know what that means. She's, uh, well that's it. Apparently well, it's not like, true. She's not going to let a gorilla look after a no, child. No, it is. Apparently, a, a fella works with him or something, and uh, this is rubbish. It's not rubbish. How can she let a gorilla look after a baby for a week? Well, forget it. So, have you ever heard her speak? <laughs> Uh, can I just give you a little fact here? Someone's emailed in for you, Carl. They've sent an interesting fact for you. I think you're going to be interested in this. Don't read it on the email. Let me read it for you. I think you'll be excited. An interesting fact from Carl. That's from Toby. He says, Attila the Hun punished some fella who annoyed him by cutting off his arms and legs, you'll love this, and stitching his arms back where his legs should be, <laughs> and vice versa. Look at his face. Look at the little smile that's just cracked on his lips. That is the kind of fact you've been waiting for all day, isn't it? So go on, again, so... Attila the Hun, right, some guy he didn't like, he cut off his arms and his legs, and he stitched his legs on where his arms should be, and his arms where his legs should be. Look at him looking at his body, trying to picture it. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I'll, I'll, let, I'll let it sink in for a little while, then I'll ruin it for him. Carl, what are you thinking? I'm just picturing it. Right, he would have died. It would have been tokenistic. There's no way that person could have lived through it. So, mm -hmm. it was just for, for the Hun's fun. He probably put him on, on a stick out, outside his gate or something. There's no way in those days that he could have gone through complete limb amputation and. So would he have wore a jumper for pants? Who's <laughs> 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 the winner of the competition? From Walthamstow, it's Joe Ogden. Well done, Joe. You got the correct answer, which was what? The fellow with two heads, that number fifty. Number fifty. Is that it? Are we off? Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. It's, uh, more of the same drivel next week. Maybe. Bye. Bye. Jet, are you going to be my girl on XFM 104.9? I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant, over there, little roundy bald head of Carl Pilkington. Good news and bad news, good news is, the boys are back in town, we're here for two hours. Hello. Bad news is, we have no monkey news, um, gay fella news, or little Chinese fella news. Really? We're going to try and, you know, leave that for a week, yeah. and then maybe come back to it. Yeah. Why good. do I get the feeling that within 20 minutes we'll be talking about little, uh, <laughs> little gay <laughs> Chinese monkeys? Carl, <laughs> 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 oh, think of that. We have got monkey news.
Have really? we? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> we've already broken that promise. Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna try and sort of talk about something else. I've just done Jonathan Ross show and they, they don't talk about the same things every week. It's weird. Mm. It is weird. Mm. But, um, or as Carl says, weird in it. Yeah. So, um, gave this show about five plugs. Nice one. Yeah. So, uh, I think we'll get upward of 800 people listening. <laughs> oh, double. For the first two minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then turning back. They're already switching over. I, I'd have thought so, yeah. I spoke to my friend yesterday, I, he's a little bit of an old fella and he said that he, for his own amusement, he had an iPod in his car and he bought a little sort of transmitter. And he could transmit the music from his iPod to sort of just beam it, kind of as he was driving along, to sort of passing cars. What do you mean? I, Make weird. their radio play it. Well, but if they had it in the right frequency, yeah. Um, I mean, pointless, completely pointless, but not dissimilar to this show, I imagine, in terms of the number of listeners. <laughs> yeah, but I was gonna say, what's the chances of people having the, this frequency? Absolutely on? pointless. So it's probably about the same, yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of? When I was uh, <laughs> when I was young, I wanted to get into radio. I was excited in radio when I was sort of in my, I don't know, it was eleven or twelve. My friend and I, we, uh, we've got a little mixing deck and we used to host our own radio show. Brilliant. Uh, from his bedroom. We didn't have a transmitter, so we'd put some speakers in his front garden, in some bushes, and sort of broadcast it to people who were, who were walking Again, by. Again, probably over the week more listeners than this show. Almost certainly. That, yeah, I love the idea, we, it never happened, but I always was hoping that some, so maybe some girls would just come by and just like sit and listen, these guys are great. I don't know where these sounds are coming from, it seems to be that bush, but. Or Noel Edmonds <laughs> yeah. coming along going, who are these guys? <laughs> yeah. Can you get on the road? Can they stand in for me when I go on holiday? Yeah. Yeah. I did, uh, did I say I did sort of pirate radio? No, go on. Did, uh, got into hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did normal radio but you had an eye patch on. Go on. Uh, Dad was in hospital, right? And, uh, he was having some operation done, right? And, uh, went to see him and didn't have that much to say to him, right? So I was, sat, I was I was sat there. Well, it's awkward though, isn't it, when someone's ill? Yeah. And you don't. Boring, isn't it? <laughs> Boring. So I was flicking around on that little radio thing they have. Yeah. And I heard like they had a radio station in the hospital, so I said, "Ah, oh, I'm gonna go and join this." So I wandered off to go and find it. Yeah. Uh, sort of joined that. Did a little show on there. Thought I can I can sort of get out to the masses here. Yeah. My mate made a little transmitter. Did a little pirate radio show from the, uh, got, got kicked out because he found out and apparently I put the, the station at risk because all the stuff could have been taken off us. But um, from Little Acorn, 16 years later, he's on a show with less <laughs> listeners. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Uh, Can you imagine if you're, you've gone into hospital, you're already pretty depressed, there's the fear of these bugs, super bugs in the hospital. Yeah. Maybe you've got some quite serious illness, you know, yeah. you don't know if you're gonna make it. His voice is what you're here to cheer you up. Alright, weird, isn't it? I saw a programme about a parasite the other night. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they, they're getting through your eye and eat their way up through your genitals. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you here's think you've radio got it bad. Ed. Yeah, exactly. Play a record, Carl. But Stone Roses, is it? Oh, Fool's Gold. Classic. Classic. Stone Roses, Fool's Gold, XFM, 104.9. Brilliant. Can I help but notice you've uh, brought some sandwiches in, Rick? Mm. What, what's in there? Cheese and onion. Cheese onion? Yeah. Because I've never, never, ever seen you make sandwiches before. I've seen you take a loaf, a piece of bread out of a loaf yeah. and sort of fold it in half, crumbs everywhere. Well, Jane made that for me because I was in a bit of a hurry. I, thought, I, I didn't think for a minute that you Why? Because it looks neat. Well, it's wrapped in the tin foil. <laughs> they, a knife has been used. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to chewing round yeah, the baguette. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, breaking yeah. it in half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah. La Albert Steptoe. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Nice? It's great, but the yeah. onions are strong. Are they? Making my eyes water. Yeah. If I can't breathe on you, yeah. it'll cure any sort of skin disease you might have. <laughs> skin disease. We watched that, um, Carl, you know, that Carl was raving about that thing about parasites, about worms coming out of your brain and that. And I watched What is it. this? Is a TV show? Yeah, called Body Snatchers. Right. And it was pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, amazingly shot as well. I mean, it's got to win an award for photography. Yeah. And there was uh, one bit that um, this little girl had been bitten by a mosquito and laid her eggs and went to the doctor, had a lump on her neck like a boil, and uh, they pulled it out and it was like, like a bullet, this maggot. Oh. And it, they put it down and it was wriggling in her blood, right? But the hole left was sort of aesthetically pleasing. You know, like that feeling you get like, I oh, once I had an ingrown hair and I quite liked it when I pulled it out. And it's a perfect little hole. And I thought, I wouldn't mind having those as long as they sort of like healed over. What are you it. talking about? I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? But why would you want a hole in your body? No, I... it's got pulling something out, sort of like pulling something out of your body. It's I sort don't of know what you're talking about. No, but it's sort of like... <laughs> this is it, you watch one program recommended to you by Carl, you've turned into Carl. <laughs> 
<laughs> you want a hole in your body? No, it was, it was like, you know, like squeezing a really good sort of like spot. I mean, I haven't squeezed spots for ages. In fact, I'd never had spots, but maybe that's it. I didn't have spots. Right. And I always thought that would be nice squeezing a spot. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would these know. things be pleasurable? Why would a hair, an ingrowing hair, that's yeah, great good. fun. That was good. Cause I, I got it, it was like a little lump and I pulled it and then it pulled out and it was like, that left a little I know what you mean. Cause I, I, yeah. I get thick hairs yeah. around there. Yeah. Like, really. Oh, when they come out it's like a bit of wax. Yeah. Like a, like pulling out a little candle. And that's... I love that. What? Uh, yeah. When, because I've got no, not much hair on my head. No. Right. It sort of grows thicker. On me face. No, not true. Um, <laughs> sure, like, go on. Yeah. No, it does. Not true, baby. Go on. <laughs> no <laughs> evidence for that. Just made it up. <laughs> so it yeah. grows sort of thicker on no. my neck and that, and now and again I'll see like something that's like a twig. Right? It's, it's yeah. really thick. Yeah, you feel it, and then you think, oh, I'm gonna have that, and then you work at it, and then when you get hold of it, it's brilliant. It's like pulling out a, it's fantastic. It's waxy and build up, and it pulls it out and it stretches your skin and it leaves a hole. I've just realised why we talk about Chinese people, monkeys and gays every week. Why? Because this is the sort of replacement. <laughs> this is what we've got if we're not talking about them. <laughs> but it was great as well. And, um, there was a, there's this parasite, right, that lives in this fish, right? Mm. And what it does, um, it changes the fish's behaviour. Because to breed it has to get its body temperature up, so it has to get into a bird. Right? What, sorry, what needs to get into the bird? The, the fish. parasite. To, to the parasite needs life to get into cycle, the yeah. right. So it changes the behaviour of the, um, the, the stickleback, and it makes the stickleback sort of suicidal. So the stickleback doesn't flee when it sees a heron, it gets caught. Right. Because this stickleback has changed its behaviour. I was tr uh, Carl didn't quite understand this, I did I still you? don't really get it. I watched it and you see like the fat fish and that and you go, oh, it's not well. But I don't understand. <laughs> well, all it does is, it has to get into a bird because it has to, to breed, uh, to lay its eggs, it has to have a, a raise of body temperature, so the fish is cold blooded, so it has to get into a bird which is warm blooded. There's lots of things, uh, there's certain things at yeah, that why, level. Why? Why is it doing that? Because it needs a, it needs the, the, uh, the temperature, it needs the, the, the heat energy for the, for its reaction. Just like, for example, that's why your balls are on the outside, because the cells have to be a certain temperature to survive. I think, I don't know if it's the sperm or the cells, but they have to be a couple of degrees below body temperature. Otherwise, they'd be in a nice cage and we wouldn't get kicked in the nads. What do you mean? That's why your testicles are on the outside of your body. They have to be a couple of degrees below body temperature. Yeah, but it's not, that isn't why they're there. You see, this is like the chat we had last week about the giraffe having a long neck. What do you mean? They're there because that's where they happen to be. They didn't go right. But that's what evolution is. It's, it's a selection process. It's not a will. The bulls didn't say, look, I'm too hot, let's get us outside, let's get outside of here! All right, hang on a minute then. What? So a little, a little man monkey, <coughs> right? Theirs are in the same place as ours. Yeah. But, but, oh, they're, they're walking around naked, so it could be anywhere. They could be like on the back. It doesn't no, matter where it, they are. They call it, well, they could be on the back, yeah. So why aren't they? This is a completely <laughs> different... <laughs> Steve! Uh, you started it! I'm washing my hands of the whole affair. And we're, we're not only back to balls, but we're back to monkey balls. <laughs> yes. In one, in one thing from about parasites, we're back to monkey ball news. Yeah. And we're back to, to, to chimp testicle news. <laughs> Alright, all right, then, so this thing, this worms in a fish. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's like a little platy helmet. I think it's some sort of, sort of... But what I mean is, why are they about? What do you mean? Why? They evolved. But why haven't they died out? Because they're very successful. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? What do you mean, yeah? Uh, what, well, tell me the, tell me the brain event that made you say yeah in that one second gap. Because uh, in a way I don't get it, and uh, if I think about it too much it hurts a bit. They've just been around for years, Carl. Yeah. Like Cliff Richard or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, just Forget about tomorrow by Feeder mm. on XFM 104.9. Carl is in some pain now, isn't he? What angers me is the fact that the listeners, at least they get a record. They get three minutes where they can just relax. They don't have to listen to this drivel. I've got to sit here for another three minutes while you try and explain to this idiot <laughs> why we they have a parasite and why we have fish and why, you know. <laughs> it's just what? interminable. Oh, Carl's question is, what's the point of a parasite? I was saying, well, they evolved alongside everything else and it's part of the ecosystem. He's going, but why is a parasite in a fish, in a heron, back in a fish? And I said, what's the point in anything? 
right, apart from the balance of the ecosystem that survives at any time. And then Steve went, Carl, you should have done this when you're in sixth form. Yeah. Questioning the point of life. Yeah, you should have had these existential questions, you know, when you were younger. Did you ever used to lie awake at night thinking where did the universe end? No. I did that when I was about six or seven for about a year. But when, I, when someone said it was- <laughs> He was lying awake at night thinking where does Manchester end? <laughs> <laughs> I assume it goes on forever. <laughs> oh, they've, they've made a map, haven't they, for the uh, yeah for the universe? Yeah. Like. Well, yeah, to, as far as they can. Yeah. Big is it? It's massive. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're that lost, <laughs> you know what I mean. Forget <laughs> the, the map's map. not gonna help you. Sure. <laughs> if you're that lost, forget it. Look, yeah. we're never gonna make it. We're not gonna live four hundred <laughs> light years. We're not gonna. Of course, you could um, take a shortcut through a wormhole, couldn't you? What's that? Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> let's not talk about the universe, please. No, let's talk about something that you could comprehend, Carl. Well, listen. Were you on Richard and Julie yesterday? Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. It was good, it was good fun. Yeah. It's a bit surreal. Is it? Yeah. It's, th it's nice, that's nice though. I really, I, there's something charming about them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They, mm. they go off on tangents, they, they sort of digress, they suddenly think of something she suddenly go, oh, my jumper's itching or something, you know? Yeah. And it's quite, it's quite charming, it's not annoying at all. Yeah. And, um, I'd never seen it through before, and, uh, um, I didn't insult them because I said it was like an adult Blue Peter. Right. But, but um. In it, what way? Well, they had a, they had a, um, a Christmas wrapping con, uh, competition. Right. Then they had, they had uh, a Christmas wrapping yeah, competition? Yeah. And then they had, That um, wasn't them doing kind of hip-hop. Then they had what the French people are like. There was a little, didn't quite understand that, living in France. Then they had a, a woman, who, um, relived an Elizabethan Christmas. <laughs> the bit that made me laugh was, she was, um, sort of announcing this through an Elizabethan microphone and PA <laughs> to all the people sitting around at dress to <laughs> 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 I'm a bit confused. Like, this sounds and, funny. Uh, it was good though. And, I, and, uh, at the end I said, um, the next week I'll be washing a tortoise and that. Yeah. And the producer said, if you do want to, and <laughs> make something for the show. We'll definitely feature it. <laughs> so I might, I might make some of those things that you spoke on Blue Peter, like sending, so you know, I remember um, they made a chest of drawers out of three match, match boxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. For Barbie doll or something, or yeah. Action Man. I so. seem to remember them showing you how to make a dusty bin once. What on on uh, yeah Blue Peter? I made one. I remember making one. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen. I haven't watched Blue Peter obviously for like. 25 years, yeah. but is it the same sort of thing? I think it's pretty much the same now, yeah. They sort of, occasionally they'll have kind of, um, larger sort of dramatic scenes, so that all the, all the cast will kind of act out sort of murder mysteries and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. There's a bit more of that going Do on. Do they still have the Kodo band. drummers from Japan? <laughs> I think the Kodos come on like twice a week. With this, the shiniest buttocks I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Greece, they're in like sort of nappies or whatever they call yeah. them, and they're playing the drums, and you see them from behind playing these big drums, and they've got shiny buttocks. The lights really pick up their, their arses. I think they've, they've, because they've kind of funked it up since we were younger, because I remember it was all always stuff like, let's have a look at this traction engine. Yeah. Or let's drive some traction engines, one very small, yeah. a slightly larger one, then you need an exactly. larger one, and we'll just drive them around the street. No, nope, you're going up Nelson's column with Shep. Yeah. You might die, you might not. But I always wondered if perhaps the people in charge were not perhaps down with the kids, when they were saying, <laughs> what we do this week, let's have a look around a traction engine. A exactly. That's I, what I, the kids of the early 80s want. But it was, they did used to sneak in education, whereas Magpie, that was just like funky people who were sort of really in the 70s. Never watched Magpie. No, Never I know I, I got it wrong as well. I did yeah. used to watch it, but I used to watch Blue Peter. I think I was conned. I always feared, cause I, uh, see, with the Blue Peter, I felt like I was learning something. I imagine on Magpie it was just, you know, Mr. T came round and, or whatever. It was a lot more yeah, cool, was it? Yeah, it, it was a little bit more cool, yeah, and a lot more throwaway, and, um, it was sort of like, Magpie was sort of like looking. Right, On yeah, telly. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. What happened to looking? I don't know, it's the Junior TV Times, I don't know. There's probably people listening who've never even heard of it. Is that what it was? Apparently so. But there was cartoons and things. Mm, yeah, it was just basically an advert for ITV. <laughs> Looking. Oh, was it? Almost entirely, yeah. And did it have, did it have like a Laurel and Hardy strip or something? No, it would have things like the story of Five Star. Really? And, uh, is it like, like, is it like the ones in the, the News of the World? Not dissimilar. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I've had five kids. <laughs> Next picture. <laughs> Bought one of them a guitar. <laughs> yeah. Next one. We're at number seven. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Next week, Tina Turner. I love the fact that Five Star is still touring. There's only three of them now. Really? They're still called Five Star. Really? Mm. Yeah, I th there was four Boney M's at one point. <laughs> Tribute acts that each one of them had a, and then there was a fifth who was someone who was wasn't the original member of one of the Boney M's who <laughs> set up a splinter group. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know how many there are now. Yeah. I was thinking um, what we should do on this show as well is have a doctor, right? Just sitting in the you're corner. Worried about your health? No, no. Just so once comes some, when when Carl says why are your bollocks there, the doctor can now go. Well, let's ask doctor. <laughs> right. And he goes, they're there because I don't know. 
And we need a vet as well. Is <laughs> We need, we need a doctor, probably a vet, some sort of vet, or a naturalist would be good. And what else? Oh, and a physicist or something, or an astronomer. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Carl? I'd love that. Would you really? Yeah, yeah. Are there, is there any doctors listening? Of course there are. As if a doctor would listen <laughs> to this. <laughs> if there, if you are a doctor, I want a qualified doctor. I don't mean someone who's in their second year at medical school. We're not interested in that. Right, a qualified doctor, a GP, or a, a, any specialist, and you maybe want to contribute regularly, give us a call. Yeah. We'll even give you a special phone line and stuff. Yeah, yeah. For not for now, though. For, we're gonna get a lot of mentalists, aren't I we? would adopt a non-diplume. An alternative, you know, identity, because your patients are going to flee if they find out you listen to this Exactly. Trial. What's the phone number, Carl? Well, they might as well just email in with the number, right? That's because you don't like answering the phone. No, I just think it's a better way of doing it. Okay. Uh, how can they prove they are a doctor? Just, uh Go on, Carl. Uh Something to do with, uh <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. Something to do with, uh What thing could they say? That we'd say, well, he's definitely a doctor. We wouldn't know that. Think of something. Well, well, I'm not a doctor, so we're on the radio, Carl. No, when we no. ask you a question, you've got to speak. I don't... know. I'm just thinking. I don't know how you'd know because you don't. You never ask them, do you? If you need their help, you don't think of going. No, before you do this, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> but saying that, but saying that, right? Go on. Um, Go on. Talking about this the other day. Yeah. Um. Oh, what was it now? <laughs> It's listen, the fella, Play no, listen. Alright, no, come on, alright, he's got it now. Go on, go on. This fella goes yeah. to the doctors, yeah. right? Oh, right, okay. Right, if this is in any way apocryphal, stupid, illogical, impossible, right, you are never, ever speaking again on radio. So make sure this is at least possible. I I'll tell you what, I'll even give you improbable, but possible. So if there's anything that breaks the laws of the universe, or logic, okay? That's all you have to avoid. On you go. Right, so this fella, right, he goes to the doctors because he's got earache. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, if a chimp's living in his <laughs> brain, that he go on. go on. So he's got earache, he's sat in the waiting room and it's all, his ears all bunged up and it's hurting a lot and what have you. So the doctor comes out and he goes, right? And because his ears all bunged up, he doesn't hear it that well, right? So he thinks it must have been me. Right? So he wanders in. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Anyway. I'm, you, I'm gonna hate this. I can just feel it in my bones. Steve, I'm gonna <laughs> let you take over. Okay. Let's, so, on, let's hear it. Come so on. the doctor says, uh, sit yourself down there. Right? So he sits himself down. He goes, uh, right, uh, take your, pa take your pants off. Right? <laughs> so he's saying that's a bit odd. Anyway. He, uh. He heard that though. He, <laughs> he, 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 uh, apparently he took his, his tackle off. The doctor, like, did some operation. What, there in the waiting room? <laughs> no, in his office. In his office, yeah. What? Um, wait, wait, so, so he, so he removed what? His genitals? Yeah. In, in his office. Why, 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 Carl? Why, Carl? Because he hadn't called him in. Oh, he's calling the bloke who wanted his testicles <laughs> taken off, and he didn't hear it. You, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, what? Hey, so, we... so the doctor went out and said, Mr. Uh, Jones, who's here to <laughs> me to whip off your cock and balls, just here and now, <laughs> right? Bloke comes in, didn't it? It must have been me. So the bloke with the we wanted his balls taken off didn't say, oh, I think he said me. So he so he didn't <laughs> interrupt then. So the bloke goes in, he starts oh, taking his man. testicles off, and he doesn't say, I'm here for me. a new single from uh, Snow Patrol and Run. That's brilliant, isn't it? Good stuff. On XFM 104.9. Rick. Go on. I'm about to say three little words to you yeah. that I've never said to anyone before. Go on. Carl is right. On what, though? From Reuters, someone's emailed in, uh, a Brazilian man who went to a clinic to have an aching ear checked ended up having a vasectomy after mistakenly believing that the doctor had called his name. Um, he had gone in there, entered the vasectomy room when he was called, he was called by the full name and yet thought it was him, but the strangest thing is that he asked no questions when the doctor started preparations in the area which had so little to do with his ear. He later explained that he thought it was an ear inflammation that had got down to his testicles. And, um, the fellas came off. Extraordinary. Right? I'm stunned. Amazing, isn't it? But there's lots of things that keep coming true with Carl's nonsense. There's a, there's a program on 
next week, the boy who gave birth to his twin. Oh. And he's there, he's like, he's like pregnant with his thing, you know. How long ago did we do that? <laughs> yeah, you discussed that. When I talked about it, it was a baby who had a baby. Now it's a boy who's yeah. like a grown man and that. It took them ages to sort that out. Mm. I did it in one link one Saturday. <laughs> yeah. with the full story. Right? Keeps happening. We've done like Donald McIntyre's thing, right? He's been ripping us off. Mm -hmm. I did Cheap as Chimps. Yeah. He's, he's been doing it. No, he hasn't. He has. He's done some program about how much it costs to get a monkey and that. <laughs> right. Uh, what else have we done? <laughs> he believes things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's loads of stuff we've done like that. Um, you had the word the maggot coming out of the head. I laughed at you. To the air didn't didn't in the program didn't see him wrapping the head in bacon, but <laughs> I mean the, the principles there. Bob Holness is ripped off rock buster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he ripped you off years ago. Yeah, he's been ripping you off for years, which is even more annoying. Yeah. So uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, yesterday, you know, Rich and Judy gave you the uh, tea picked by monkeys. Yeah, I told you about that. Either the last week or the week before. Yeah, and then you also told me that there's a place where they grow coffee where the weasels come out and eat the coffee, <laughs> right? But they have too much of it, get just and vomit, and they sell the vomit because it makes the coffee smoother. Weasel vomit. Yeah. Absolute shy. It's not. It's not. Right. When you say it like that, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, where where uh, is the way you'd say it? Yeah. No, they, they, why do they keep why do they keep taking the coffee? Probably you, addicted you get to addicted it. Addicted to it, don't you? Caffeine and that. Yeah. Why do they stick it up then? They have too much. They are tired. They can't sleep. They <laughs> sort of. <laughs> tired, they can't sleep. <laughs> so they get ill. It eventually yeah. wears them down. They're sick, and then they they sell it. I showed those looking. There's people saying monkey news all the time for car, yeah. and I showed him one earlier, which said there's a new monkey hospital that's been opened. Yeah. Carl, no, that's for the, for the, for the but, treatment of monkeys. Right? But he immediately thought it was run by monkeys yes. in white coat. Did he really? Yes, and he was disappointed because it wasn't. He was assuming there'd be little janitors. Is that what you said? Yeah, little janitors mopping up. Um, Carl! The little chimps with the ECG machines or whatever they're called. Uh, clear! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> he was ang almost angry. Yeah. Disappointed with it. And what's this about Donna Air giving her baby to a gorilla for a week? It happened. No, it didn't happen. She had a baby. <laughs> they went on the honeymoon. They left it to a little gorilla to look at. <laughs> talk! Absolutely! It's, don't talk! Oh, God! Again, there's people online now so they can have a look at Anna Nova. Do you want to give, to, uh, do you want to give some stuff away? Do you want some, uh... <laughs> he believes it and that's it! But the more these things sort of like pop up come true, the wor more worrying it is. The more <laughs> worrying it is for everyone. I uh, imagine if Donna Air had left her baby to a gorilla. It's absolute. It's libelous. Are you saying that? It's libelous. It's not. Well, you'll, someone will send it in in a bit, and then you'll you'll feel daft again. So I'm not even worrying about it. <laughs> okay. Right, right. You've got some rubbish to give away. Do you think? Uh, yeah, we've got some stuff to give away. Uh, DVDs, stuff like that. Well, let's uh, play a record. Let's do the. Any VHSs? <laughs> any films on VHS? Yeah, a couple of them in there. For four ninety nine. Yeah. Supergrass. Yeah. Excellent. Um, what is the competition, incidentally? Uh, doing songs of phrase. No. Oh. Oh. Supergrass, late in the day on XFM 104.9. There's too much to get through here, Rick. Go on. There's too many things we've got to systematically. Am I going to eat my list. words? Well, before that. You know, we get emails all the time, they're coming through all the way through the show, and I, I open know. them, and a lot of them, because yeah, everyone's contributing, it's brilliant, but we can't really absorb everything, there's too much coming yeah. through. So I tend to open them quickly, I have a look, see if there's anything we can sort of make sense of, and close them again. Sometimes Carl looks at the emails as I'm opening them. One opened just a minute ago. Did You saw his oh, face. I suppose, yeah, what was it? His face was just stunned. He was it's just absolutely dumbfounded. It was yeah, like he'd just seen it? something extraordinary, right? And you closed it quickly. I, I did close it quickly. I'll tell you why, what? right? Always got to bear in mind how Carl's mind works. Uh, all he saw was the name of the band that this email was uh, promoting. So yeah. all he saw, all Carl saw, and you can imagine how excited he was, was all he saw was half man, half biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all he saw. <laughs> I've never seen anyone so excited. Oh God. Oh. It was actually just plugging the popular joke novelty band. <laughs> oh, you heard of them then? Yeah. Oh. Imagine how excited he was. That is fantastic. <laughs> 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 biscuit! 
<laughs> Brilliant! Mr. Garibaldi! <laughs> oh! Half man, half biscuit. That is genius. <laughs> oh, uh, amazing. I just saw it, and when you closed it again. Yeah, but the thing is, if, if he hadn't have told you that, and he'd have uh, erased it, next week you'd be saying, hey, about what they've done, the scientists, they've cloned a man with a biscuit. <laughs> He's got currants for eyes. Another ghost swimming. <laughs> what? Another okay. ghost swimming. Anyway, just to, uh... Oh, I don't, I don't know what the world's coming to, but, um, someone sent us a link to, uh, one of the web news pages. Go on. The headline, Donna Air to hand her baby over to a gorilla. Well, it's not. It's not gonna be what he thinks. Listen. Donna Air and her zoo owner boyfriend, Damien Aspinall, intend to place their baby daughter in the care of a gorilla. Uh, the couple plan to put Freya, who was born in September, in the gorilla enclosure at the zoo near Canterbury. They will then let her be carried off by the female of the group. Neither parent has any qualms about letting their daughter be taken off, despite five keepers being killed by animals at Howlett's and his sister's park since 1980. I don't understand. What do you mean? Well, th that's it. That's the It's thing. a newborn baby, and they're going to put it in a group. But, I mean... Well, he said, why would I not trust them? I know them. I grew up with them. They're my friends. Yeah, but it, but I, I'm not saying that they're, they're aggressive, but it might roll over on it or something. I don't, well, I don't know. Take it up with the, uh, with them. I mean, Donna Air's not the brightest spark in the box. No, but I'm, I don't think... It would seem her husband is. I don't think, you know, that, <laughs> that would, in, she'd endanger... I mean, they must know something we don't. I still do, I, I still can't believe they're just gonna leave the gorilla with it. Mm. Bit mean, why though, would I'm. you, though? But, but why would you? Even though it says, well, it's cheaper than a babysitter? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Uh, I don't know. Well, how cheap is a gorilla babysitter? Carl <laughs> knows, because there's probably some sort of organisation. <laughs> right, are we, uh... Competition there. Come on, then. What is it? Oh. Songs of Phrase. Um, Remind us of this. Um, we got the film one coming up later as well. Oh. But Songs of Phrase is the one where I, I took a popular phrase from the show. Well, no, it's not a popular phrase from the show. It's sometimes something you said once. Oh. There's this airy Chinese kid. Yeah. And, and I get all different bits of songs, so, yeah. you know, I make up that sentence. And you have to email in with the artists that you hear. Well, what's right. the popular phrase then? What's this? What's this w popular phrase that's sweeping the nation? Uh, it's what we talked about last week. Go it's, on. Uh, my girlfriend had a problem with a marrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Okay. She that's... wasn't your girlfriend. Oh uh, yeah, but I couldn't find a <laughs> no, okay. blind date or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> so seven seven artists it's taken to make up this. Me song girlfriend phrase. had. A uh, problem with her marrow. Well, that's at least eight, so. Well, maybe I not. I think I've managed it in seven. Anyway, okay. here we go. Oh, I want the artist. Yeah. Well, yeah. the names yeah. of the yeah. artists. Yeah. Just yeah. get a pen and paper and make a note. What artist are you hearing here? Bye. There you go. Oh, okay. Right. What's so, more? So, uh, what, what are the artist? Bye. Very My girlfriend good. had a problem with her marrow. We want the yeah. names of the artists. What can we win, Carl? Just, just, just can I just um, recap that story? Um, girl can't on a blind date. Um, uh, but when he found out that this girl had some sort of bone marrow problem, he said he didn't want to see her anymore. What's the point in getting to know someone that's going to die? <laughs> yeah. So just that's what you're dealing with. That is what you're dealing with with Carl Pilkington. Would you buy a car with a Duff engine? <laughs> <laughs> It's a fair point. Ricky Gervais <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. <laughs>
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a test match or something. But it's all this rubbish before and after. It's drags this, on. This recent war seemed, I thought, just generally it was better presented than the previous one. Because I remember the, well, goal, getting, the first goal for it was it was often during the night and I wanted to stay up. Yeah, no. because I think the American had rights to it, like the Tyson fight, so we, yeah. had, to, we had to get it at two in the morning. Exactly. Which is annoying. They had, you know, their prime time in that. Yeah. And yeah, a lot yeah. of it was in black and white, it was when, it, when the bombs were in. in. <laughs> so, uh, this no. This time the, there seemed a lot more colourful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much better coverage. I think there should be an awards. Yeah, well, I'd like for it. So, like, Channel 4 one for cricket. Yeah, I mean, a few times as well, I was quite pleased to see you know, they actually had footage of the bombs exploding. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 no, it's good, well done. Generally, you know, good on you, yeah. well done, good um, on you. Yeah, it costs you, a lot though, doesn't it? It is, isn't it costs Wars thing. a lot more. When you got something like, you know, uh, a Jimmy Carr game show, which probably costs about underground, yeah. like, half an hour of war costs millions, It's almost man. as expensive as, like, Terminator 3 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know. But, but then, you know. You've got, you got a variety. Exactly. Sorry, Steve, you're talking, mate. <laughs> well, no, I just, uh, just wanted, I just wanted to make sure you were aware that the, um, the World Elephant Polo Championships have taken place. I did get it. You're I think they mentioned it on, yeah, yeah, we won, didn't we? England won. Yeah. Well, I, my question is, where have they been practicing? I don't know. I, I, do you remember it, ever at school anyone ever saying to you, <laughs> are you interested in playing, uh, polo? Do you, with it was, it was, do you reckon it was five blokes in pith helmets kept sneaking into a whips nade? <laughs> Possibly. What are you doing, lads? We're practicing. Get, get down. Yeah. Get off them elephants. Yeah. I genuinely, I don't, I didn't even know we had a team. I elephant, can't believe it. No, but it's I, like Johnny Wilkinson in the rugby lands, they're gonna get MBEs, all sorts. The elephant boys, the elephant polo boys, nothing. They're gonna get nothing. I haven't seen the but, sun you know, to, be, like to be fair, it's not like horse polo where I think, I don't think you, there's a stick long enough. I think the elephants kick it, don't they? I think you might be right. I think they're not allowed to use their tusks. They'd burst it, weren't they? Mm, I think they go, yeah. oh! <laughs> Start again. Raheem! Yeah. What do you mean the elephants kick it? Alright, I've, I've opened a can of worms here. Uh, you know, um, um, normal polo on a horse, they have like, um, yes, they mallets. Up. Yeah, they whack them, right? But I think it's, obviously they're too high up. I think, I, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they just train the elephant to kick it. So, so what, like, why are people something about? Why not just let them have a kick about without? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that! And why does horse racing have to have a jockey? Well, they just let the horses go. Oh, you know, okay, lads, on your no cheating. <laughs> on your marks, get set, go. You go, get back here, get back here. Brilliant. Why do you think? Just I tell you what. That I, I'm gonna be like a teacher now. Why do you think? Uh. Sort of get mixed up which hand they sort of go in, which hand they've got to get the ball in. Sort of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you how do you sort of steer an elephant, as it were? How do you ride an elephant? It seems quite a complicated procedure. I don't imagine they're quite as versatile as a horse. No, you can't sort of like pull it and its head goes. No, can you? I mean I don't really know how you. I mean you have to have a huge playing surface, wouldn't you? I mean these are big creatures. Yeah. They 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 use Kent. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. They and they drop two big. Uh, huge jumpers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. Say. One, one in, uh, yeah, south of Kent, <laughs> one in north Kent. Exactly. And it takes days and, and is there, days. is there the full, is there like eleven on each team? Yeah, and one on the subs bench. <laughs> exactly. And it, it keeps breaking, the bench is broken. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. <laughs> Easily because he's never getting chosen. He's never, he's never getting chosen, yeah. yeah. Well, he doesn't turn up to training. Of course, and he's, he's never gonna forget. He's down at the lake. Exactly. Down at the lake, when they should be training, eating too many <laughs> buns. <laughs> exactly. Like gas coin. <laughs> right, Carl, come on then. Oh, and online, on. just must tell Go you as well about Lord Admiral Nelson's erotic letters. Go on. They've been sold at last. <laughs> for £117,000. Sandy Mail? I don't know who bought them. <laughs> <laughs> who opened them that yeah. shouldn't have? They, they got weren't sent even to someone else. to you! They were meant for Lady Hamilton! <laughs> what are you doing opening them? <laughs> Go well, on, uh, what's he say? What's he got up to? <laughs> she, uh, it's interesting because they've printed a couple of the things he's wrote. Dear Lady Hamilton, uh, a bit of a problem. Uh, just the one hand. You might have to help me out on a couple of <laughs> yeah. manoeuvres. Yeah, and the one eye, so I'm not appreciating the 3D. <laughs> exactly! I don't care where you put it. Yeah, exactly. it, I don't, I, Yeah, go on. <laughs> you have to help me guide it in. You might as well stand go across the other side of the room for all the good it do me. Exactly. Go on then. Um, uh, of course he ended up kissing Hardy, didn't he? <laughs> did he kiss Hardy or did he ask him and he never did? Well, I don't know. I don't know about this, because I heard that he didn't and it said kiss me, which means fine, and then I heard that he did say kiss me. Kiss, kiss me, me Hardy. Hardy. Like, you know, because it, it was such suspense. I don't know, is it Kismet or is it Kiss Me? Kiss Me Hardy. I think his final actual dying breath was No Tongues. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. And, uh, uh, and someone went, Cause you what? <laughs> exactly, yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe my, that was his my, nickname. My name's Smith. Yeah. Do you want me to kiss? <laughs> exactly. Kiss me hardy. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. I'll kiss your lips and you'd be happy with it. <laughs> but, uh, I'll yeah. I'll touch you hardy. <laughs> but I'm not kissing it. Go on. A couple of quotes from there. Uh, this is him writing to, uh, Lady Hamilton, who he's having a, an affair with. I can neither eat or sleep for thinking of you, my dearest love. I never touch even pudding. Well, I think we've all written a letter like that to a lady. That's a euphemism. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> like, I, that, I think that's, I haven't eaten, and by the way, I haven't even knocked one out. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> are gonna get a sack <laughs> Alright, Carl? Who are producers? Is this alright? It's all euphemisms, I've not said anything wrong. Go on. Oh, come on, it, it happened in the 19th century. Yeah. We can talk about it, it you know. Yeah. This is more topical than monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. listen, we're sorry, we better get back to the competition. I'm worried that we've, uh, we've lost sight of that competition, because I'm not gonna lie to you, we've had no entries whatsoever so far. I can't believe that, because I actually got up most of those. That's actually a more accessible one. I knew, I, I think I know all the artists and I'm stuck on, um, uh, Girlfriend, but I think I might know who that is. Let's hear it again. I'm Bye. surprised. Bye. No, I think that's a pretty accessible one. An eh? accessible quiz. Yeah. So no one's has the email up, or no one's listening. No. Well, I think there's a little bit of that, but um, we I think we've accidentally closed down the texting. Oh. So if if you're texting in, this <laughs> is rubbish. It really is awful, isn't it? Yeah. Just just play it again. Hang on a minute. Bye. <laughs> I'll tell you what it was, we didn't give out the prizes. We didn't say what the prizes oh. were going to be. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the emails are going to go oh, mental, yeah. mate. When they find out it's the first series of Open All Hours on VHS, they'll okay, be uh, yeah. sliding in. Let's see what and the Bridget here. Nielsen video. Exactly. Right. Oh, dear. Oh. No, actually, it's not too bad. Go on. The best air guitar albums in the, uh, Yeah, in the that's world. still going. That's, <laughs> never, that's one evergreen. <laughs> That'll keep running and running. Uh, Some kind of anniversary box set of a Doctor Who episode with a small model and car. What's that, baby? I'm Alan Partridge, series two. That's yeah. worth having, obviously. And yeah. Porridge, series three. Okay, good. If not uh, watched all of them on UK Gold, then <laughs> <I'm> on <DVD. laughs> there's something wrong with you. <laughs> all right. So yeah, let's hear it again. All right. Bye. Bye. Name the artist. That's all we want. Yeah. The artist. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Dodger Vase at xfm.co.uk. Play record. Ryan Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Radiohead. Fake plastic trees on XFM 104.9. Mm -hmm. Someone just emailed in and said, uh, just want to know what you think of that cover of Wonderwall. Mm. We told you. We said it was great. Yeah. Listen. But they must have been listening to hear the song. Yeah. Extraordinary. Although maybe they just turn off when we start talking. Yeah. That would make sense. That would make sense. Mm. I mean, it makes sense in a sort of, sort of preserving of sanity type way as Objectively, well. Objectively, Rick, if you were listening at home, if you didn't know us and you were listening to the show, would you listen to it, would you bother? Um. I know that's a hard thing to get your head round. Uh, it's difficult to say, isn't it? I, I've no idea. I've no idea what people coming to this for the first time think. Mm. I, I mean, like, it, I, you know, I love you like a brother, but I get sick of you. Yeah. I mean, I, I get sick of me. Yeah. Sometimes I, I go up and It's I, weird you should say that, because someone's emailed in. Yeah. A recent survey's been done by Chantham and Gloucester. Yeah. The most desirable neighbour in Britain. Number one. Shane Ritchie. Johnny Wilkinson. All right. It doesn't actually give me the, the full rundown, but uh, David Beckham was in the list. Yeah. Shane Ritchie was indeed in the list. Yeah, uh, he's flying at the moment. As was Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really? Well, that's what it says. It doesn't tell me where you came, though. And y that there was actually a neighbour from hell, and you weren't in that list. Well, I'm a good neighbour. Oh, come on. I am. I'm quiet. I don't keep myself myself. I never... Do you know what I'm thinking of? What? If it was if it was best friend. Yeah. Now that would be a nightmare. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Most desirable a, friend. I'm a good neighbour, I'm quiet, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I imagine being stuck in a room with me writing all the time, with me <sighs> squeaking like a chimp. Unbelievable. Although I, I don't physically abuse you, I save that to my bald mates, like Carl and Robin, that I just like to squeeze their head. I don't yeah. squeeze your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's because you command a little bit more respect. Ah, thanks very much. Do you know what I mean? You're mm. not, you're not that sort of, 
You're not an idiot. <laughs> no, sure. Sure. All right, Carl, got anything to say? Has anyone seen this picture in Heat this week? It looks fantastic, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. do, do you know what Steve said when he saw that, Carl? Go on. He said, it has captured Carl. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, you just look utterly gormless. <laughs> In the picture, it's, it's captured brilliant. You know how like a good photographer can do that and capture the essence of someone. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Well, actually, I'm the photographer. Yes, it was a screen grab from the behind-the-scenes footage. Well done. So I got that that gimpness. I captured the essential gimposity. <laughs> exactly. The uh, yeah, Carl. Yeah. All right. Should it? Yeah. Well, I'm th um, I did a little article for Time Out, and I've, I think Boyd from Heat has sent over. That screen grab to them, so he might be in timeout. I'm gonna try and get him in every publication. Yeah. For one year. It's like- Well, Dave you've managed it in the last two weeks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like a Dave Gorman project. Mm. Uh, mm. do you- are you Carl Pilkington? <laughs> yes. Th let's do that, shall we? If anyone's- if anyone's got a publication, it doesn't matter how little, mm. just take it from heat. They don't, they don't, that's mine, so you're uh, welcome to it. Um, just try and just put his picture in anything. Next to round things is best, mm -hmm. isn't it? That'd be good. You alright, Carl, with that? All right, then good. What have you got for us, Carl? Uh, News headlines? There aren't that, sort of, been that much going on. Sure. Sort of headline-wise, you no. know. Sure, I to, sure, no, sure. No, because I look for good headlines and that, don't I? That sort of yeah. get you interested, like the... Well, then, then when you're interested, you don't read on. No, I did. Okay, go on. Like the one, do you know I read, the one I read out a couple of weeks ago, that was, uh, man lives in dump for ten years. Mm. Right. I remember the Chinese woman eats dirt. Yeah, yeah well, that was man, a man, cracker. man lives in dump for ten years. I read on with that one yesterday. Yeah. I found it in my bag because I took it home, so that I'll read that when I get a minute. Yeah. Right? News. Imagine that. News. Yeah. I might read last Thursday's <laughs> Sun. <laughs> yeah. Just to catch up. Uh, do you know how he got caught? What do you mean how he got caught? He, was, lived, he lived in he a, dump. a rubbish dump. What he was lived, he lived in a rubbish dump. What's no one, no one knew he was there. Right? Yeah. He was living off food that had been chucked away. So a lot of people chuck away stuff that isn't off. So you can survive on that. Uh, he had a nice little place to sleep and that, and an old mattress, that was alright and stuff. Yeah. Uh, got away with it for ten years, until he decided to celebrate bonfire night with some fireworks. Can <laughs> 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 you believe that? <laughs> well, he, you know, he's happy that the uh, gunpowder plot was foiled, <laughs> exactly. and the Guy Fawkes was beheaded. Anyway. Thus saving... Our system of government. There's got to be a couple of news headlines, surely. Um. Hold on, wait a minute. Bong. Here's penis man off the hook. <laughs> Bong. Man changed his name to bubba bubba bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Dwarf to live in a glass box. <laughs> Dwarf to live in a glass box. Yeah, it's meant to be art or something. <laughs> it's not though, is it? What? <laughs> I mean, do we art? Why is, yeah, well, who's, who's idea is this? Is, is, is art or is it someone hired a dwarf to live in their box? It's just a box, and he can even leave when he wants, apparently. He can, yeah. like, go, oh, I'm hungry, I'm going for a walk, and he be puts a little note. Uh, with his time in he might end up in four bits. Oh. So, just be careful. But to me, that's like that thing when I said to you about the woman in the jar. What woman in the jar? The woman in the jar, they go, oh, come and see the woman in the jar. And yeah, it's then a it big turns jar. out it's a big jar. So yeah, it's a like, big well, jar. put me yeah. in there as well, then. Exactly. It's not yeah. special. Yeah. And that's, that's the same with, with him. It's a big box, he's a small fella. What's, what's good about what that? What do you want to do, though, to compress matter? But hang on, it's not a world record breaking attempt, it's supposed to be art. No, what's art about that? Well, I don't- What's art about that? It. Oh, can we do a show for BBC Three? Carl Pilkerton going around, what's art about that? Yeah. That is brilliant, what's art about that? I'd love that. Would you? I'd love that. Me and Steve are gonna do a thing called Is Art Rubbish? Where we'd go around and we'd chat about it. Yeah. But um, we, we can hand that over to you if you want to do that. If anyone from BBC Three is listening, Carl Pilkington, what's art about that? Alright? Weird, isn't it? And what would you go around like Sensation and things like that and Saatchi and going- Dali and that. You put a sheep in for Maldives, what's art about that? Our oh. butcher does it. Uh, Alright, uh, weird, isn't it? Uh, what do you make of Dali and the, the melting clocks, all that stuff? Talked about it, haven't we? Have I we? told you, yeah, told you. What's the thing about it? Uh, he sort of milked the idea a bit. <laughs> right. Because yeah, sure. every, everything had a melting clock on it. It yeah. was like he had a bit of success with it once and then he just ruined it. Do you know what I mean? It's sure. like... It's like you with the monkeys. Like status quo. Yeah, or... yeah. Sure. What's your favourite artist? Don't say Lowry. Lowry is my Why, why is Lowry your favourite artist? Captures life, doesn't he? Going on and In that. stick form. I know you're a big fan of Where's Wally as well, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've never found him, have you? I've never found him yet. 
<laughs> no, Carl, that's not Wally, that's a stain on the table. You've come <laughs> off the book again. Anyway. <laughs> Listen, are we, uh, are we doing what's in a bit? What? 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 Right, what? what? We don't know what you're talking about. Clear record. What? Yeah, we'll be doing what's it. Yeah, here. what's it? Coming up after the break. Uh, the film thing. The film thing. Oh, <laughs> idiot. Don't look back into the sun on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Carl, have we got the results? Yeah. Go on then, what are they? Uh, play Songs of Phrase. Again, okay, this, Songs this of Phrase. Phrase. These Fellas. are the songs. Bye. Bye. My girlfriend had a problem with a marrow. The answer's Sinatra, Prince, Billy, uh, Bill Medley. Uh, you two, Shirelles, there was also Dub Pistols in there. Uh, no, no, no one got all of them, Carl, obviously. Um, but we'll give it to Mark Cantan, he got, uh, what did he get, about six or something. Well done, he's from Dublin, Good. so that's nice. Okay. Listening over there, the Irish. Yeah. Good night. Um, yeah. a German man, just thought I'd let you know this, Carl, sure. Ricky. A German man has, um, been arrested because he taught his dog to give the Nazi salute. <laughs> and then he made it do it in front of two policemen. I think it's an offence in Germany now. That's is a fascist it? with too much time on their hands. No, but is it, a, it, it's illegal for a dog to do it as well? I think so. I bet he thought he'd found a loophole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, he's been dying to do it, but he thought, well, I'm, I'm not allowed to do it. It's illegal for a human to do it. Yeah. Thought he got round it, uh, no. For dogs. a while it just kept doing the, uh, Basil Fawlty funny walk. <laughs> he's going, no! <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. It. Don't do the legs as well. Uh, oh. But, so the, the reason I mentioned it is because he's German, and you, what were you telling me about earlier about- Carl was wittering on about the Germans earlier, he was saying something about the accent. Um, it's yeah. fine with blokes, but not with women. You won't want to go out with a German woman because the accent. I just it? think it's a bit manly, isn't it? Sure. Is it? Yeah, it sounds a bit hard. <laughs> I can't imagine having a nice sort of romantic chat <laughs> with someone. Well, it's not a romantic language, no. It's, it's it's quite harsh. Yeah, but that's our. No, but what I mean is, right? I can't speak any other languages apart from this one. Well, right. You're struggling yeah, with this one. Yeah. And what I mean is. Whereas you you really do speak the language of love. All right. It, There's some condoms. Where's my tea? Yeah. What I'm saying is, if a French woman was talking to me, I'd say, I don't know what you're talking about, love, but it sounds good. Mm. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> whereas a German, German woman, yeah. she'd go, oof, and she might be saying really nice stuff. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. But then we got talking because, do you know, like, me brother- Sort of a prejudice, really, isn't it? In a sense. What do you mean? S in a sense it's racist, but anyway, on you go. Yeah, go on. But it's not really, is it? No. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, my brother was in the army, we've talked about it, haven't we, and yeah. how he got kicked out for going for a packet of flags in a tank and that, yeah. right? <laughs> But he was, uh, when he was in the army, he was based in Germany for a bit. And, uh, he used to be one for sort of, you know, picking up the ladies and that. He, he always had, you know, new girlfriends and stuff. Yeah. He's just a Pilkington. Get, just to get through loads of them. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't. I, I wasn't that bad. But well, no, because you, you, you had things like you trouble with your marrow and that. No, you might die. I'm not interested. Yeah, but no matter what he did, do you know what I mean? When he was a bus driver, he was one of them who always had a woman still at the front with him and sort of, you know, having a chat and stuff. Sure. And, uh, right. he sort of got kicked out of that and stuff. <laughs> but, um... When he was this, when he was bus driver, did, did he own the bus or did he just take it to get a packet of fags? <laughs> so, he, uh... He's in Germany. He's in Germany and the army people say to him, now, we know what you like, Pilkington, right? Das Pilker. Don't be, uh... Don't be meeting up with any German frown women. lines. Leave the frown lines alone. Not allowed to go out with German women. Because they, apparently they get you and then they beat you up and that. What, the German women? Yeah. Why? Go on. Dunno, they just said don't, because they don't like, uh, English army man. English army people and that. <laughs> Why? See, you, the, the English is your first language, isn't it? Are you speaking German now? I, d I, I can't tell. They don't get out with the Germans, go beat you up and that, don't like English army man. What See, is what, that? What worries me, Rick, is we've got the face, the body language and things to try and interpret this gobbledygook. The yeah. listeners, they just I got mean, the words. it must be, I yeah, know, yeah. It must be just ridiculous for a listener. Right, just do the competition. What's what was on? that anecdote about? Don't go out with German women, they'll beat you up. I'm just saying when if you're in the army, if you're about to join the army and you think it'll be great, I'm gonna meet loads of women over in Germany, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Wise words there, <laughs> Wise <laughs> words. So this station in public service. Excellent, Excellent. okay. Right, uh, oh, can we just play a song and then do the film thing? No, right? just do the film thing now. Oh no, let's play a song. Oh, what are we playing? Bit of brag. Billy Bragg. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> 
What's this called? It's called the Saturday Boy Car. Have a Billy Bragg, the Sunday boy on XFM 104.9. Um, Ricky's laughing because he's just <laughs> thrown something at Carl. It made him jump. Yeah, that's worked well. Here are the prizes <laughs> for the, uh, the film quiz thing, which I think is what it's called. It's brilliant. brilliant. People will be loving this. It's, uh, is Trance it? Alp Anthems. It's brilliant. 2003. We know we've got a lot of Trance fans listening. The best air guitar album, obviously. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, the best club anthems. Yeah. Uh, series one of Happiness by Paul Whitehouse. Uh, the very best of Father Ted on DVD. We've got Teachers. We've got Know Me Knowing You. Not too bad. Yeah, a few bundles there. Good stuff. Christmas gifts and things like that. So that yeah. Knowing Me Knowing You, I've noticed it's on VHS, which is good. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite quaint. Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Uh, yeah. So what's the con explain the conceit of this? It's uh, it's when you know we sort of dig out a film that I've been in, mm -hmm. and uh, this is. Don't know if I want to tell you what a film is because that might be the question. Thinking about it. Because there isn't that much going on in the clip. I think we need to know what the film is. Do you? Yeah. Alright, it's Rain Man. <laughs> okay. Uh... Why is he called Rain Man? Is that gonna be the question? Yeah, I know the, I know the answer, Carl, don't worry. Don't look at me like no, that. No, I you... do, I do. Oh, well then, yeah, you should watch the film, yeah, you should. Right, so it's you, Carl, in the film Rain Man. Yeah, it's the bit when, uh, Tom Cruise, uh, is in the Doctors with, uh, with, with the, with the ill man. Alright. <laughs> There we go. You ready? Well, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I do know that his brain doesn't work like other people. Wait, I, I am sat here. Don't go talking about me like I'm some sort of diff kid. Got a good brain. Works well. It stores all sorts of information and stuff, doesn't it, Tom? He, uh, remembers things, little things sometimes. Well, th th don't say like that, little things, as if it's stuff that isn't important. Are you good with numbers? The doctor's asking you a question. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just thinking. Good with numbers. It depends. Uh, I'm not that good at maths, but I remember facts that have got numbers in them. Like, I know that uh, one person in two billion will live to be 116 or over. Right? Weird thing is, a lot of them are Chinese, so... You know, sort of makes you wonder if they, they're lying. I'm afraid I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean you don't understand? It's not. All right, here's an easier one for you then. Goldfish have better memories than people think. He's right. He's right? Yeah. See? There you go. Uh, goldfish related. Oldest goldfish in the world was 41. No. Yeah. Um, funny thing is there, if it was a... Goldfish with a dodgy memory could have been older. Could have been, you know, pushing 45. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. He should work for NASA or something like that. Well, didn't go that far. You know, they're the sort of things that I like reading about. You know, I've got that big book there. Uh, it's full of. Did you read all this? Yeah, ju don't. You it, read all these stories yeah, that are in this book. Don't bother touching. Maybe it. you better put it back. Give it back. Get off. Okay, well, no, Ray. Ray, it's... take it easy. I'm not gonna. I won't touch anything else, Ray. Come on. It's okay, Ray. Okay, come on. Can I ask you something else, Raymond? No. Well, you've annoyed me now. You've come in here saying, saying I'm daft and that and messing with my book. Just go, will you? Excuse me. Were they messing with your big book of freaky facts? Yeah, that's that order. Good. Right. So, what's the question? Why? Why is he called Rain Man? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone happy with that question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Ricky Doctor Face at XFM dot co dot UK. Why is he called Rain Man? Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bad day. R E M XFM one hundred four point nine. That's nearly it, isn't it? It's almost it. Got through another well. one. Got through another one seamlessly. <laughs> the film Brilliant. quiz, obviously, we had just moments ago. Uh, it was Carl featured in Rain Man. The question was, why is he and the film called Rain Man? The answer, Ricky, was well, uh, Tom Cruise's character when he was little couldn't say Raymond, and he used to call him Rain Man. Okay. 
plenty of right answers, but we're going to give it to John Steele, who interestingly is from West Yorkshire. He's listening. Yeah, that is, so inter that, that is interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that's pretty much that. Is there time for Monkey News? I think we've got to have Monkey News. Let's and then that, that second track from the Ryan Adams Let's play the jingle though, if we can. Oh, chimpanzee that Monkey News, you f- Right. Now, uh, it was back in the 1980s. Right. So it is quite topical then. Mm. Um, okay. When did this happen then? 1980s? Yeah. Yeah. It's about a, uh, Colombian F1 sort of, form you know, Formula One driver. Yeah. Uh, apparently these races were going on, right, and, uh, someone kept winning them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, okay, forget it. Forget it. No, don't do it. It's cause it's rubbish. Cause it's rubbish. Right, so someone kept winning the races. So, uh, uh, this, this, um, this someone, this, this human, um, that kept winning the races. Th so this human being that kept winning the races, um, Carl, what was his name? Um, his name is it? It's Jimmy something. Yeah. How tall was he? Well, Just some no, interest. No, 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 no,